windows and doors. Here's your Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Local Sports Update, sponsored by Chad and Sandy Real Estate. Jack QB Trevor Lawrence goes into the 2024 offseason program, focus on the team and not a contract extension. Uh, my job is to go win games and, and to be the best I can be for this team. Even if I you get the, the contract extension, that's still my job. FSU football head coach Mike Norvell, following yesterday's spring practice, highlighted the play of wide receiver Malik Benson. Malik is such a great fit for, for this program, and he is, you know, he loves playing football. He loves who he gets to do it with. I mean, he's been a wonderful teammate, wonderful addition. Jacksonville's Jumbo Shrimp notched three hits to get a win Tuesday over the Norfolk Tide at home after three scoreless innings. The Jumbo Shrimp took the lead in the bottom of the fourth. Jacksonville faces off with Norfolk again this evening at 1-1 to Financial Ballpark. Game time is 7.05. At your Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Local Sports Update, I'm Sam Nelson. At 10.01, it's 73 degrees. Time and 10 brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler, Bueller. 10XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. There's one chapter completed, and the next chapter is opening up. Uh, for me, you know, when I opened up that rookie contract, that was, wow, this is, this is it. And I completed that chapter. Now it's. The next chapter. They throw well. It could be a double pass. This is Boyd. Now he wants to throw it back. And the ball's picked off by the Jaguars. Josh Allen. Has he done enough this year yet? He picked off the double pass and ran it back inside the 10-yard line of the Cincinnati Bengals. Extremely honored, extremely blessed and humbled to be even given a contract uh, of this size. And, and, you know, I'm just totally blessed. 1010XL 92.5 FM presents Jaguars Today with your hosts, Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, and Dylan Denmark. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Happy Wednesday to you. We are marching ever so close to the Jacksonville Jaguars securing their first Lombardi championship. I don't know when that's coming, Tony, but we're getting close. I it's feel it. It's a day closer. It's a day closer. It's going to happen. We're a day closer to it. Yeah. What do you mean, if it's going to happen? Yeah. How dare you even it's suggest assuming, it couldn't it's a, happen? It's a big assumption. I suppose. Yeah. I'm going to say the Jaguars will definitely win a Super Bowl. I just don't know when. Yeah. You know. Then again, might have said that to the Detroit Lion fans back when the Super Bowl started in the 60s. It's got to happen at some hey, point. It'll happen. Yeah. We won all these championships. Are you kidding me? In the 50s and whatnot? Yeah. We'll get that. No problem. Still waiting on it. Mm-hmm. Wah, wah. <laughs> uh, all right. So today, uh, we're not going to guess when the Jaguars are going to win the Super Bowl, unless that's what you want to do, because we're going to talk a lot about Trevor Lawrence. He spoke yesterday yeah. at length. Uh, Foye Lewican doing the same thing. Tone is the Jags open up the offseason program. And I, look, maybe this is not the highest bar in the world, but it does make me feel good every time Trevor Lawrence opens his mouth and says how much he enjoys playing in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He doesn't have to say that stuff. And... They're the team that is likely going to be handing him a quarter of a billion dollars sooner rather than later, at least promises to pay him something in that vicinity or sure. more. Uh, so, you know, who wouldn't love that, right? And we all love living in Jacksonville and all that. But from an NFL standpoint, you know, it doesn't appeal to everybody. And uh, I think Trevor's been a good fit here. We talked about that heading into the draft. Would he, being from a small town in Georgia, fit in Jacksonville maybe better then some of these other places certainly hasn't hurt his marketing opportunities. No. He's got national marketing opportunities. And if he plays more and he gets the Jags into the playoffs consistently, and he is seen collectively by everybody out there as being in that locked in top 10 tier, they're going to continue to come his way. All Anything he wants in his NFL career will be available to him here in Jacksonville. Yeah. And he gets to do it while being here which may more fit his style than being in some in New York or Big wherever fish, it was going to be. Pond. Right, like that kind of thing. It may just fit his personality more to be in this kind of area than it would to be in New York, which everyone was freaking out about when the Jags wound up getting the number one pick and, you know, this is the last time you're going to see him. And all. It's like, all right, clown, right? Like, what else can you do but react that way to those people? Trevor is everywhere. And has been since he got drafted to Jacksonville. That didn't impact him. Now, he may not be able to make the local advertising advertising revenue that he could in a place like New York. 
He's doing all right. Right, but, you know, also locally you're going to spend a lot more of that just living in New York, right? Absolutely. And, and all, it, beyond all, it's just, I just like when he gets up there and he talks about how much he loves being here and he wants to be a Jaguar for it a long, fe- long time. There's not a whole lot of doubt. Like when Josh Allen said it, it doesn't feel like there's any doubt that he means it's it. It's genuine. Yeah. Right. I, I, like, you can say the right things. Oh, yeah, yeah, I want to be here. Love playing it. You know, I, I, it does feel genuine to me. And, yeah. you know, that in the end – he sees we got a lot of talent in this locker room. You know, I was going back looking at some of the Trent Balky quotes from earlier in the offseason. Sorry to spoil your morning by mentioning his name, but <laughs> yeah, I yeah. did. You he's know, talking tomorrow. Yeah, and he he said, "Hey, look, you know, we're not this team that won only three games last year. We won nine, mm-hmm. and yeah, it wasn't good enough. We all understand, especially after an eight and three start. But there's a good core." With this football team, we expect to be good. We got a lot of good players already in that locker room. So they get back to work yesterday, and we'll see how that all goes. We'll hear from Trevor Lawrence throughout the course of the morning today. We may mix in a little foyer, a little as you mentioned, bulky, going to speak this week. It's going to be a busy week uh, uh, for Jaguar stuff. So we're going to focus on that a little bit more than we will the draft, which is rapidly approaching. Yes, it is. At least today. But I do have an interesting couple of draft scenarios that I came across. Okay. As we've talked about, you know, what to do at 17, a ton. What do you do at 8 or 22, Tony, uh, are the questions. Because I found two mocks, one that had the Jags trading into the top 10 Mm -hmm. and what they had to give up to get it, and another that had them sliding back five picks as a certain player who was expected to go in the top 10 slid, prompting a market for another team to trade up. Now, you may go who's that player, and would we be interested in taking that guy? Well, I'll, we'll tell you who that player is, but I'll lay out these scenarios, and you can tell me what you think is more attractive, you know, the accumulation of more picks or that feeling of a little bit of going all in on one guy in mm-hmm. this year's top ten. And, uh, you know, there's been a, an affection from a certain percentage of the Jaguar fan base for the idea of drafting Roma Dunze and maybe trading up to make that happen, because it looks like you're going to have to trade up to make that happen, despite you still see the occasional stray mock that has him sliding into the mid-teens. It's just, <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. so many teams right in that range in the late top 10 into the early teens that could, I mean, who couldn't use a guy like that if he's as good as he's going to turn out to be, right? Yeah. But the particularly wide receiver needy teams that are sitting there makes it unlikely to think that he's going to get much past uh, yeah, the single-digit picks. I least. would be... Stunned, right? If, if I don't think he gets outside of, those, of the top ten, right. I think the Jets would take him over yeah. Brock Bowers. If any of those top three wide receivers were still on the board when the Jags were picking at seventeen, I would be. It'd be a shot unless something happened between now and then that would explain. Yeah, it'd have it, to right? be a draft day thing. Yeah, it'd be to some, kind of explain like it. injury or off the field issue. Right, that like that's like the Josh about. Allen situation on steroids to me. Right, because I was very, very sure going into that draft that year. I would love Josh Allen to be the guy for the Jaguars. It's not happening. Not getting past the Raiders. Right. We didn't like, think. It's, just, it's just not happening. And then the Raiders did what they did, and it's like, this might happen. And then Tampa does it, and it's like, holy cow, we're going to get Josh Allen. Yeah, like, or at least we're going to get the chance to take him. Right. And, and we didn't pass it up. And they did not pass it up, but that would be what the Roma Dunze thing would be to me, again, just times a 1,000. Because I just I can't imagine the scenario that puts him down there unless something happens with – you know, a gas mask. You know, like it right. would take something like that. Well, yeah. and looking at it, um, you know, just looking at some wide receiver numbers today, the Jags, as I think we're all aware, I don't know if we've talked about it in this context as much as we probably should. Name the list of Jaguar wide receivers that they've drafted that have posted a thousand yard season. What do you got? A Rob. A Rob. Who else you got? Anybody? Uh, you got anybody pockets? Morning pockets. Cecil posted. Morning. No, he was just under Cecil it. Cecil didn't do it. Yeah, he's just under it. He was like nine fifty. Cecil did not do yeah. it. Yeah, maybe Justin Blackman. Justin Blackman did not do no. it. No, came what? up short. Maybe Marquise. Marquise was a second rounder. Yeah, and uh, he didn't. I don't think he did it either. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's dra- yeah drafted. Drafted right. Didn't yeah. say first right. He Marquise did not do it. Yeah. There's only two guys. DJ Chark. Uh, He's yeah, the other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. DJ had one 1,000 yard season in the Jaguars' history. They've drafted two guys that have had 1,000 yards. Not yard been a seasons. strong position in the draft for since '95, which is when they started drafting yes. players for this organization. They're tied for the fewest 
thousand yard receivers drafted in the National Football League. Three other teams have managed to draft two guys. I mean, two total seasons. Yeah. At least that's the way I read it. Um, you know, if you draft one guy, it was like six or eight seasons. Somebody asked me today, if we took Brian Thomas at 17, would I be happy with the career of Brandon Cooks or Chris Godwin? <laughs> and I went to Brandon Cooks' page first, and I was like, yep. Yeah. Yes, I would. Uh, and I know Brandon Cooks has bounced around, and he seems like a guy who – can't stick in one place for very long. Brandon Cooks has had like five or 6,000-yard seasons. He has like 9,000-plus yards in yeah. his career. How many Jags have 9,000 receiving yards? His name's one. Jimmy Smith. Yeah. I mean, it's not even close. He'd be by far yeah. the second leading receiver in a yeah. Jaguar uniform I'm pretty all sure time. only Jimmy and Keenan have 5,000. I think Keenan's in the sixth yeah. somewhere, but yeah. I mean, so yeah, would I be happy if our first-round pick wide receiver got 9,000 yards in his career in a Jaguar uniform? Now, if he's bouncing around all over the place, no. And they ask, would I, would I be happy with that or would I want more? Well, I always want more. Yeah. Give me the twelve grand that Jimmy Smith got. That I'd would like be better. I'd like to have a guy that has a Hall of Fame caliber that, career. That'd we'd be love awesome. That. But if yeah. you're telling me we got Brandon Cooks, that's not a bust. No. Brandon Cooks a really good player, has been a really good player. I don't understand why he bounced around. Maybe it's a size. Maybe, it doesn't fit. I don't, maybe it's his personality. I don't know. But in terms of just the production, would mm-hmm. I take that? I'd want more. But oh, yeah. and his reply was looking at it. To be fair, you know maybe Brandon Cooks is a bad example. He was talking about a guy with a high floor, low ceiling. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if nine thousand yards. Brandon Cooks is going to go blowing past ten grand in his career. Yeah, that's to me not necessarily that low of a ceiling. No, and if you extend the list for Jaguars receiving leaders all time, and you only include the guys who got three thousand yards in a Jaguars uniform, you only have to add one name to Jimmy and Keenan. Mercedes, that's the list that they uh, that played in a Jaguar uniform that, and had that over that. three thousand yards that's receiving. Crazy, yeah. Uh, Mojo, by the way, is fourth on that list wow. with twenty eight seventy three. Then Allen Robinson is fifth. Hey, Jimmy Smith had nine one thousand yard seasons for the Jags. I'd certainly prefer that, but That'd be uh, amazing. Yeah, you know, Brandon Cooks is not chopped liver. Um, I don't know, man. I, the more. We get close to the draft, the more I think it won't be a receiver if they stay at 17, but that's just a gut feeling. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not trying to give you that. I'm getting a sense from inside the building or anything like that. Uh, let me look at Cooks here real quick and see if you agree with this. Uh, 1,100 in year two, 1,173 in year three, nearly 1,100 in year four, 1,200 in year five. Uh, had an off year in 2019, only had 583, then bounced back with 1,150, then 1,037. Last couple of years, 699, 657. As like Brandon Cooks is like, mm-hmm. I guess he's like the two behind C.D. Lamb. He's kind of the co-two with yeah. Michael Gallup a little bit last year in Dallas. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I would take that all day long. Yeah. And, and look, Chris Godwin's got four 1,000-yard receiving okay. seasons. All know? right. So would and I take – Including the last three in a row. Cooks has six. So would you take a guy who gets five 1,000-yard seasons? I would. I would, too. I would, absolutely. I mean, how many guys, like we said, they, they drafted two players that have had a single 1,000-yard season in the history of the franchise. Yeah. The history. Point at Balky, point at all of them. By the way, they're both Dave Caldwell picks. So there you go. Thank you, Dave, for your wonderful brilliance in player <laughs> evaluation. All right? I, I do like Dave, but uh, not necessarily all the picks he made. All right, uh, so today we're asking you a simple question. Fill in the blank today. In five years, Trevor Lawrence will blank. All right? As long as the sentence makes sense, fill it in with whatever you want. Still be tall. All right. Yes, he will. All right. Fantastic. That is accurate. Whatever you feel you want to put in that blank that you think is going to be an accurate statement, let us know, and we're going to hear from your quarterback a lot today on the program. John Osher also going to be along from Jaguars.com. And I'll throw those two trade scenarios. One moving up. One moving back, what is more appealing to Tony Smith and you, Jaguar Nation, out there? I'll lay them out for you when we return in a moment. Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, and Dylan Denmark here with you eight days out from the 2024 NFL Draft. You're listening to Jaguars today on 1010XL 92.5 FM. 
Hey, folks, Mike Dempsey here for Awaken 180 Weight Loss. So happy to talk about these folks every single day. I love when I come across a product or a company or a service that does exactly what they promise to do. Those are the kind of folks that I like supporting, and that is what Awaken 180 absolutely is. They promised me I'd lose four to five pounds a week on average. Well, I started out with 9.6 in the first week, but you have some ups and downs, but they stick with you, and they tailor their already time-tested methodology to your lifestyle, right? Everybody needs a few little tweaks. We get up at different times. We work different schedules. They worked with me and Awaken 180 got me the results I was looking for, not only losing the weight, but keeping it off all the way since last September. How do you get started? Well, call 844-346-1800. Whether you need to lose 10, 50, 100 or more pounds, it doesn't matter. 844-346-1800 will work for you. You'll lose the weight. You'll keep it off with free support for life from Awaken 180, online at awaken180weightloss.com. Helping you over the hump, Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Weight Loss Wednesday continues from the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios on 1010XL. Making the middle of your day have something to say. Yes, and finally it's paying off. Joe Cowart, Matt Hayes, and Leon Searcy. What is this? XL Primetime. What time is it? Two to four. Where are we? 1010 XL. Imagine driving a late model Corvette, BMW, Mercedes, Lexus, Honda, Chevy, Ford, and more. All at a fraction of the original sticker price. Visit Vaughn Motor Group's indoor showroom and browse a great selection of dream cars that are inspected with warranties. Before you make your next auto purchase, check out Vaughn Motor Group on San Jose Boulevard or at VaughnMotorGroup.com for a complete inventory listing. If you can dream it, you can drive it at Vaughn Motor Group. Lauren Brooks here from Mayport CNC Fisheries. Growing up at the beach, I know good shrimp and oysters when I see them. They're local and they're fresh. That's why Mayport CNC Fisheries is my go-to for both. They have local shrimp in stock seven days a week. Eat like a local at Mayport CNC Fisheries. A lot of companies will tell you they're the best. At Custom Tree Surgeons, they show you every time. Custom Tree Surgeons has built an all-pro team. Every tree service professional has years of experience, continually trained and certified. They know what, when, and how to handle any job. It gets done efficiently and quickly by a team of experts. So for tree trimming, removal, stump grinding, and emergency services, forget any name other than Custom Tree Surgeons. There is no job they can't do better. Go to website customtreesurgeons.com. That's customtreesurgeons.com. And let them show you how the job is supposed to get done. Want to pay less to vacation more? General RV makes that possible and even more affordable during the model year closeout. April 17th through the 21st, five days of savings and free family activities with the best deals on travel trailers, motorhomes, fifth wheels, and more. Guaranteed. Get to the model year closeout where you can pay less to vacation more just how you want it. Only at General RV in Orange Park on Wells Road off 295. Everyone agrees that playing quarterback is the hardest thing to do in sports, yet it's the one thing that everyone says they could do. Denny Thompson is the quarterback whisperer. Friday mornings on The Drill. Brought to you by Tyson Sound and Security and George Moore Chevrolet. Let's go! Looking for a night of action without a big hit to your bankroll? This Saturday, April 20th at 7 o'clock in the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena, cheer on your Sharks as they go all in against the Las Vegas Nighthawks. See what I did there? With tickets as low as $15, you can't find this kind of family affordable fun anywhere else. Call 904-621-0700 or visit jacksharks.com. Let's go! Decades night. Find that old members-only jacket or favorite flannel shirt. We're celebrating the 90s. What's your favorite decade? Let's! Go! Don't miss the fun this Saturday, April 20th at 7 o'clock in the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena. For tickets, call 904-621-0700 or visit jacksharks.com. That's tickets at 904-621-0700. Let's go! Let's go! Mia here. Looking to spruce up your home or business for the spring? Window Gang's exterior cleaning services will remove stubborn stains, restore windows to a clear shine, and ensure your gutters flow freely. Call 262-7300 for a free estimate. Beards Diamond's most popular sale is back. All wedding bands are buy one, get one free. Plus, all stackables, all right-hand rings, all eternity bands, and more are buy one, get one free. At the St. John's Town Center or at BeardsDiamonds.com. 
Attention all business owners. The raining season is coming and it's important to ensure that your property storm drains are free from debris and functioning properly. That's where Duck Duck Rooter comes in. Our powerful VacCon truck can effectively clean out your storm drains and prevent costly damage to your property from flooding. Don't let clogged storm drains ruin your business and reputation. Call Duck Duck Rooter today to schedule a cleaning before the rains hit. 904-862-6769 or online at duckduckrooter.com. Hey, sports fans, it's Ace Carline for Kingfish Pest Control. Are mosquitoes turning your outdoor fun into a full contact sport? Time to call in Kingfish Pest Control. I can tell you from my own experience, they are the MVPs of mosquito elimination. See for yourself. Call Kingfish Pest Control today and get an unbeatable 50% off your first treatment. That's right. Sign up for a full season of lockdown coverage and get 50% off your first treatment. Don't let mosquitoes steal your home field advantage. Reclaim your yard with Kingfish Pest Control. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free from credit cards, car loans, and personal loans. Hey, Prosser here. Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make it happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value's way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards. Get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508. 904-999-1508 or go to LoanPronto.com. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. Open early and open late. Dailies is always there, making things easy for you to cruise in and cruise out. So hit Dailies Cold Case the next time you're craving a cold one. Bud Light by the case, plus plenty of singles to choose from. Corona, to the king of beers, to Stella or a Natty. They're all sold at Dailies. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Jaguars today on 1010XL. All right, we'll get to uh, Trevor Lawrence speaking yesterday along with Foye Lewican if we have time for that today. If not, well, we're here every day, mm -hmm. uh, at least weekdays, so uh, we will endeavor to bring you some of those thoughts, uh, at least uh, a select few from the Jaguars starting quarterback and middle linebacker. Uh, but, Tony, I did find at profootballnetwork.com, who pumps out, if you want mock drafts, they got like 17 guys doing them. There we over go. There, right? Yeah. Like every day you get one, two, three of them, multiple rounds, whatever. They get seven-round mocks, three-round mocks, one-round mocks, whatever you like. So some of them, they do trade. Some of them, they don't. So be it. We've seen an occasional trade-up scenario for the Jags. Haven't really seen too many trade-back scenarios, though, I don't think. So mm -hmm. caught my eye. So uh, first of all, let me give you the trade-up. This is from a one-round mock, so we don't know what – would have happened beyond this anyway, okay? Okay. But here's here's where we go at the top of the draft. Pretty straightforward here. You go Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, quarterbacks, one, two, three, fine, okay? Marvin Harrison goes to Arizona. Joe Alt goes mm -hmm. to the Chargers, right? Okay. Which could happen. Yeah. Especially, some you know, somebody doesn't jump up and trade into that spot. Malik Neighbors goes to the Giants. Ah, they're top three going to be off the board here in a mm -hmm. second. Uh, Olu Fashinu out of Penn State, the offensive tackle, goes to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. The Jags are like, that's it. We're going to make our move. Bold move time. Okay. Going to go get us some Roma Dunze. Okay. What do you think the price is to get to eight? I mean, I would assume 17 and at least the second next year. What else? Is there something added in there? 17, 48. 153, that's your fifth, yeah. and your second next year. Yeah. You paying that? Because remember, at, at nine, 17 and 48 is an overpay based on the chart, mm -hmm. meaning you should be getting like a seventh rounder back. This sounds to me like a there's going to be a market for a Dunze, and this is going to be the price. You don't want to pay it? Don't pay it. Mm -hmm. But it, would you pay this price for Roma Dunze? 17th pick your second rounder this year and next year and a fifth rounder on top of that. 
That seems steep to me. That's a lot. But if you want him, that may be what it takes. These bold moves up the board, you know, especially if it's perceived that he's the last of a tier of mm-hmm. guys. And as good as Brian Thomas or Adonai Mitchell or any of these other guys may be, they're not going to be Roma Dunze if they're that's not how the you same feel. Same prospect. Yeah. If that's how you feel, at least. All right. So that's one side. I'll let you think about that, okay? Yeah. That's a pretty big investment that you're giving up. The chance to get a 48 pick this year, your second rounder next year is already off the board. It's a lot. So, we go through this other one, also at Pro Football Network. A little bit different, different person doing it. Got Caleb Williams at one, got Jaden Daniels at two, got Drake May at three. Wait a minute, it's an exact copy. No, it's not. <laughs> Here's Minnesota trading up okay. to get J.J. McCarthy. Yep. 11 um, 23 and a 2025 first round pick. So, three rounders for J.J. McCarthy. Whoever needs to read this, <laughs> who thinks Trevor Lawrence would be available for less yeah. than that, yeah, Mike, Mike, no, no, on, no, Mike. no, come on, Mike, that would not be Terrence. That would be our Friday co-host <laughs> right there. Yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna throw that one out there. When last I spoke with him, all, all right, right. Um, Marvin Harrison then goes to the Chargers. Okay, Giants still take Malik Neighbors. Tennessee takes Joe Alt. Okay, Falcons are said to really love. Leatu Latu, okay. right? the UCLA edge rusher. And, in fact, in the mock where they traded back with the Jags, that's who they took at 17. Okay. okay. In this, they take him at 8. Okay. At 9, Jared Verse goes to the Bears. Olufashinu goes to the Jets. Mm-hmm. Damn it, there's a Dunze. <laughs> Falls right to the Cardinals. Yeah. So the Cardinals trade out. Mm-hmm. Get three first-round picks. Instead of taking Marvin Harrison Jr., they get a Dunze and two additional first-round picks all day. All day. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, you talk about winning the draft. Dang it. Couldn't get it done. Oh, Terry and Arnold off the board oh. at 12. That's one of our targets. Yes, he is. Quinion Mitchell goes at 13. There are our top two cornerback prospects off the board, Tony. J.C. Latham out of Alabama. Mm-hmm. Oh, Brock Bowers was sliding, but the Colts grab him. There goes Byron Murphy at 16. Did, did you notice the name I skipped in any of that? No. Dallas Turner. Uh, yes, yes. Right? Yeah. Because the Falcons are said to love Latu, and Verse goes right behind him. So in this scenario, Turner slides. You're going to be saying, oh, Turner's not going to slide. People slide in the draft, right? Yeah. It's not like he's being talked about as a top three pick. He's in that 8-9 range. Could he slide to 17? In this scenario, he does. He slides. And Philadelphia loves drafting pass rushers, right? So Philly has picked 22, and they realize that Dallas Turner is on the board. Now, the Jags could take Dallas Turner, okay? They could take a lot of guys that are still on the board there. Offensive tackles, Brian Thomas is still there. You don't have your top two cornerbacks, though, available to you. So, in this deal, Philadelphia, to move up from 22 to 17, Mm Mm-hmm. Gives the Jags pick 53, but okay. you don't get to keep just 53. You got to even it out on the back end, and you got to send 96 and 114 back to Philadelphia. So you're dropping five spots in the first round to take 96 and 114 to jump to 53, which you'd never be able to do. Mm-hmm. 114 doesn't close the gap between 96 and 53. It might get you to 90, right? Yeah. It's not going to get you anywhere close to the 53rd pick. So you would now have. 22, 48, 53, no third-round pick, and only that one fourth-round pick, okay? Is that worth it? I think so. You think so? Yeah. I think the value is worth it. Yeah. I don't it, know it would if depend I, on what's on the board at that point, but well, yeah. Well, what's on the board is what's on the board here. Yeah. Da- Dallas Turner is available. Here are the next handful of picks that come on. Brian Thomas. Okay. We would have been okay with that. Yep. Marius Mims. Okay. Don't know how we feel about that. Tali Fwanga, probably pretty good about that, right? Mm-hmm. These offensive tackles, that's at 20. Troy Fawatanu, so if you're hoping for offensive tackle, they all go bam, bam, bam. I mean, sure. with that board staring you in the face, that would be tough not to take that deal, right? Yeah. And then at 22, the Jags take Cooper DeGene out of Iowa. Yeah. Um, so they get, probably if they're going to take corner and sit there at 17, they get the guy they're going to take anyway. 
If Which, they're going corner, yeah. If they're going corner, yeah. right? And what they did then, I'll give you their second-round selection so you can have a better sense of what they did with their capital. In this mock, they went Malachi Corley, the Western Michigan wide receiver, at 48. So they address corner and wide receiver, whether you think that's the right receiver, you know, mm-hmm. I can't help you. Uh, and then they took Michael Hall Jr., the Ohio State defensive tackle. Hmm. <sighs> That to me, like, I feel like if I want to de tackle, could I get a, a run stuffing de tackle at 96? You know, I feel, I don't know if that's juicy enough. The player that I'm getting, is that a print? Maybe, maybe I don't know enough about Michael Hall Jr., too. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, which, which appeals to you more, making the big swing for a Dunze or adding the extra? And keep it in mind, you're keeping your second round pick next. So right. you don't have a Dunze. You have Cooper DeGene. Forget about who they took in the second round. You could have a Dunze and not pick again to 96. Or you could have Cooper DeGene and not have a second rounder next year. Or you could have Cooper DeGene have two second rounders this year, a second rounder next year, but lose your late third and a fourth this year. What's the better deal? Uh, I'd probably prefer the trade back. I think. That's the better team building yeah. deal. It may not be the fan choice yeah. deal. You know what I mean? Like that that you get an alpha wide receiver for your young quarterback. And here's the thing. If a Dunze becomes a star and DeGene's just a good player and these other guys are good players, you see what star receivers go for, right? Sure. The thirty million dollar a year guys, right? I mean, I'm not saying corners can't get up to that, but it's more you know more immediately whether that receiver is that kind of guy. Absolutely. I and I think we've had enough of the conversations about what it would take to trade into, you know, that 8 to 10 range, specifically the bottom end of that. You know, if you're targeting a guy like a Dunze, and I'm completely comfortable giving up 17 and second-round pick this year to do it. I The addition of second-round pick next, next year, year and the fifth. And like, the fifth. Like, the combination of all that, it's like, whoa. The fifth is like, to me, is like window dressing. It is, but... That's the... Of course, it could be Antonio Johnson. Right. Like, hang on a second. Like, that's when it's... I I understand being in love with the player and the prospect, like all those things, and I wouldn't lose my mind if that's the deal they wound up making on draft day. I'd be like, they Bold have move. targeted this guy. This is the one. Bold move. You know, like they're circling this as the guy they want. I mean, okay. a good say Kirk Davis, Zay is your fourth? Absolutely. And Ingram... As your pass catching There's a lot crew, to like about that. There's a yeah. lot to like about that, right? But at the same time, there could be a lot to like about substitute Undunze for Brian Thomas and then take a guy at 48 and yeah. take a guy in the second round next year and combine that all together. What's better for your football team, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it's like it, it reminds me a little bit, and not everyone's saying this, but there are a few still saying whatever it takes. Got to go get one of those top three receivers, whatever it takes. Well, I feel like we're in a, a bit of a time loop with the Josh Allen thing. Whatever he wants, pay him whatever he wants. Well, yeah. in the end, Balky actually got a pretty good deal out of this. Like, Josh Allen's deal doesn't hit that $30 million unless he's hitting 17 and a half sacks every year. Yeah. He's, it's really more like a $28.5 million a year deal. Trent Balky actually got a pretty good deal on this deal, but in the timing of it, was unable to use the franchise tag on Calvin Ridley, right? Yeah. So, but but should he uh, would he have been better using the franchise tag on Calvin Ridley and giving Josh Allen thirty three million a year? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Time will tell. Yeah, right? it is. You know, we've talked so much about coming out of the Josh Allen deal, and they finally land one of these guys who feels like a cornerstone franchise guy, mm-hmm. and you offer him that kind of contract, and they say yes, and you had so many guys who said no. You know, Allen Robinson said no. And if Allen Robinson had continued yeah, to play at a high level, no. right, like if they play at the level that they have been playing, that this is why we want to pay you, is if you play at this level, Josh Allen said, you want to give me what? And if I play at that level, you're going to pay me. i give you a little extra? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You Let's, know, like he's well. the first one that said yes, not that he was getting underpaid. Even right, if not, not that Allen Robinson was offered 28 and a half million no, on the low end. <laughs> but he was given a really fair contract offer. He said no. Considering and that's he was his coming prerogative. off a torn ACL. Right. Like, that's his prerogative, and it's worked out the way that it has for him. Unique, it didn't matter what they offered him. Jan wasn't coming back. Right. He didn't want to have anything to do with being a member and of that, this franchise. that's his prerogative, but it also cost him millions Millions of dollars. of dollars. It's that Josh is the first one to say, Josh loves cool. it. Yeah. yeah. Trevor loves it. Yeah. He's going to take that bag. Yeah. Eventually. I'm very confident. I'm at zero 
doubt that sometime in the next 15 months we're I mean at, at the long end right it could come this summer for sure the next three months yeah. whatever but by the end of next summer Trevor Lawrence is going to have signed a long-term deal I'm quite confident in that mm-hmm. today we're asking you something a little bit different five years from now Trevor Lawrence will blank. That's your question of the day, presented by Chad and Sandy Real Estate. You can hit us up on the phone lines, text line, designed by Lifetime Enclosures, phone lines, on the Oprah Roofing phone lines, or uh, in the YouTube chat, or, of course, on social media as well. Adam D underscore 1010XL, at 1010XL, Fat Tony, and at 1010XL, Denmark. Hey, I can't go to the strip club if I want to go to the strip club. <laughs> wow. Yeah, new one in their pocket. I don't got nothing else, man. What? All right. All right. <laughs> Total blanket on this one. Uh, uh, this is the news. Yeah, is this it, was yesterday, man. Yeah, I didn't see it. Side. I didn't yeah. see it. What happened? Oh man! So the news goes out, and uh, they interview Antonio Brown on Southside Boulevard at the Wawa, and uh, a- Antonio Brown, not not the Antonio right. Brown, just a. Well, Antonio he thinks Brown. he's the Antonio Brown. Yeah, but that's yeah. fine. Okay, so, Antonio Brown's being so interviewed. So he uh, he's just talking about the gas prices and it's getting out of control. And he dropped those two sound bites. Give, give me those like, sound bites back. Gotta, back. Hey, I Antonio. Use it. Antonio, how you feel about the uh, the price of gas these days? I don't got nothing else, man. Well, I, I understand, but what about the price? I can't, I can't go to the strip club if I want to go to the strip club. All right. He said yeah. scales are like $5 now. Uh. Oh, my God. It was so funny. <laughs> All right. Well, Pockets has a new alter ego out there. So, uh, you know, I, I need to be looped in sometimes. That's mm-hmm. all. You know, I spent three hours of my life watching the Yankees lose a one-run game last mm. night. I was uh, oblivious to the world outside of that. All right, uh, so let's get to the quarterback next. Trevor Lawrence speaking yesterday. Let's hear from uh, some of the selected answers he gave to the questions posed by the local media. And uh, Johnny O coming up at the top of the hour. He'll spend hour two with us as we near the NFL draft just eight days away. Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, Dylan, Denmark here with you. It's Jaguars today on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. Jaguars today from the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. It's a weight loss Wednesday on 1010XL. Awaken 180 Weight Loss, your long-term solution for weight loss. May I have your attention, please? Get ready for 1010XL's new primetime lineup. Start the day with Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser. Dempsey and Fat Tony take you to noon. It's the ladies of helmets and heels until 2. XL primetime follows at 4. Franchi and Carline drive you home. Then Baloo and Hacker take you into the night. It's showtime! At Honda, we appreciate all the comparisons to other vehicles. And no matter how many times they compare their vehicles to a Honda, only a Honda is a Honda. Remember, value, quality, safety, there is no substitute. Visit your local Honda dealer now and experience the difference. Prosser here. When it comes to the business of selling your home, there's one promise I can give you that will deliver, and that promise is chadandsandy.com. That's chad, A-N-D, sandy.com. How do I know this promise is guaranteed? Because they say so, and then they deliver. You see, Chad and Sandy guarantee your home sold at an agreed-upon price and deadline, or they will buy it. So whatever problems you think you're having selling your home, there is your simple solution. They're going to buy it if it's not sold for exactly what you want. Mortgage rates have lowered going into the spring selling season. Now is the time to maximize your equity, and you can do it with the real estate team of Chad and Sandy. They have a plan and the experience to sell your home fast for maximum cash this spring. John and Ursula in Green Meadows wrote in, I, we weren't in great health, decided to downsize to an easier place to manage. After 185 days, our home failed to sell. We went to Chad and Sandy, sold in 12 days. You can too at chadandsandy.com. I'm Clayton Bromberg, the president of Underwoods. You've heard me talk about the Rolex my grandfather gave me for graduating from college, but there's something else you need to know about Rolex watches from an official Rolex jeweler for over 60 years. If you own a Rolex, probably today more than ever before, if you need that Rolex serviced, you should only visit an official Rolex jeweler. In North Florida, there are four, with Underwoods three stores and Mayors has one. Anybody else claiming to work on Rolex has no direct access to parts, and the use of non-authentic Rolex parts jeopardizes your Rolex from both an authenticity and a value standpoint. At Underwoods, we have state-of-the-art Rolex repair shops, both designed and outfitted by Rolex and staffed by Rolex watch technicians trained by Rolex, and best of all, our shop is on premise, so your Rolex will never leave Jacksonville, and our Rolex repairs carry a two-year warranty. At Underwoods, in San Marco, Avondale, and the shops of Ponte Vedra. 
Ever wonder how you can transform your living spaces into captivating works of art? At First Coast Lighting and Fans, they offer a huge selection of high quality products to match your desire for elegance, quality, and uniqueness. Visit their showroom on Phillips Highway at the Avenues and step into a world of quality without compromise. Discover the difference that locally owned expertise makes and let them help you experience the transformation from average to extraordinary. At First Coast Lighting and Fans. You don't have to be a football star to get a signing bonus. The team at Republic Services needs your skills, and they're paying up to $5,000 for you to join the roster. You'll be joining a winner. As an essential business, the Republic Services trucks have not stopped rolling with hourly and weekly pay and better benefits and vacation packages than the rest of the league. Driver trainees, $1,000 sign-on bonus. CDL drivers, $3,000. Diesel mechanics, $5,000 bonus. Join the winning team at Republic Services today. Visit republicservices.com. Equal opportunity Certainly facing challenging economic times, I can't speak for all of us, but for me, comforting to know my money is in good hands with ITP Partners. Take it here for ITP Partners. Jacksonville guys, take it care of my Jacksonville money. I'll admit it, I don't understand a ton about the economy. Higher interest rates, 401ks. What I do know is I move closer to retirement. I continue to watch my money grow. Thanks to Chris Bryan, Jeff Hartman, Reagan Wright, Dan Abel, and Reed Wingate. Get in the game, guys. ITP Partners, always there to help. For more info, Chris at ITPPartners.com or call 904-312-9751. She's very comfortable talking sports and hanging out with the boys. Mia O'Brien here, still providing the best multimedia sports coverage in Northeast Florida on 1010XL radio, video, and social channels. All things Mia are driven by Arlington Toyota. We're in Florida and pest problems are persistent. Want them gone? Mission accomplished with Mission Pest Solutions. Veteran and locally owned and operated Mission Pest will blow your mind with their communication and response time for all your pest, termite, and mosquito needs. Text or call 904-944-PEST. You'll speak directly with the owners. Mention 1010XL when you call 944-PEST. You'll get 25% off your initial pest or termite protection service. Mission accomplished with Mission Pest Solutions. If you're an experienced, skilled plumber or welder that's MedGas certified and you're tired of working for a company that just doesn't treat you right, Local 234 is the place for you. Their pay is the best in the business. You'll walk away with $35.09 an hour in your pocket. With benefits, that's just over 50 bucks an hour. Local 234 has been around since 1901, and that means something. Visit UA234.com to send your resume. Local 234, make the right connection. Bring your guns and bring your hoses, and we're ready to put up some punches. It's Guns and Hoses Charity Boxing. It's back. It's that time. Bell time. In fact, 6.30, Saturday, April 20th. Join us at UNF Arena. Dan and I there for the millionth year in a row. It is so much fun, this charity boxing. And it's serious, and it's fun, and it's impactful, and you're going to have a great time. By the way, street party before and after the event. Make it a day. Saturday, April 20th. Bell time, 6.30, UNF Arena. Guns and Hoses. What's changed totally inside and out? The Cune Flowers massive storefront, and yes, they've totally remodeled the showroom inside too. This is Frank Franzi, and the next time you drive by, stop and smell the roses at Cune Flowers. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555, Jacksonville. Now, more Jaguars today on 1010XL. It's been good. It's been really good. It's been nice, uh, you know, physically being able to get healthy and kind of get back in the swing of things. Um, been able to travel a little bit, do some stuff, and now we're, we're back rolling. It comes quick, but just excited to be back, obviously, with, with the guys that were here and some of the new guys in here. So it's, it's exciting to get everybody back together. We got new guys. We're excited. Tony, I'm excited to be back with you in pockets this mm-hmm. week. You know, after a couple of days off, I feel refreshed and renewed. Uh, I wasn't healthy until Monday, <laughs> but I'm back. The voice is strong. Now, uh-huh. Trevor Lawrence said he wasn't healthy until March. I believe him. You know, like, fully healthy. He was healthy enough to play. Yeah. But, obviously, at times, not healthy enough to practice. And I do think, look, you can look at it as excuses or not. And I, Tom McManus will speak for himself, and he does it very well every Friday with us. But I, I know Tom, I, I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. I think it's pretty clear when – you look at what he has to say. Trevor needs to be better. He needs to be better. I think we all agree with that, but I don't think by saying he was impacted by a multitude of injuries last year is an excuse. It, it is a reality. 
you know, if you're out there and if you are a sprinter, if you're Usain Bolt and you've got a, a twinge in your hamstring and it knocks two tenths off your 100 meter time, mm-hmm. is it an excuse? Sure, but is it also a reason? Yeah, it, whatever, however you want to define it. So uh, nobody's saying that Trevor Lawrence doesn't need to improve. No, he absolutely needs to improve. But no, the, you know, and he addressed that. Lingered. Yeah, he addressed that yesterday. Absolutely. You know, he was asked specifically about does he regret playing through it, mm-hmm. and he was he basically said no, no, not really. You know, I don't regret it. It and but he did acknowledge at least that you know it may have affected the team. I don't know, but. I think it's my job to go play when I can play. That's essentially the way he answered it. He was asked, uh, as you mentioned, does he regret the fact that he played through injury the way he did last year? I don't really regret. I don't regret necessarily the decisions I made. I think the thing to learn about it is maybe the way I play. Maybe there's some times where I can avoid some hits. Um, you just got to stay healthy. You know, The teams that get better every week and that stay healthy are usually the teams that that go pretty far and into the playoffs and win the Super Bowl. So, especially at quarterback, you got to stay healthy. So that's that's something I, I've learned. L- let's be clear about this: Trevor mm-hmm. Lawrence not going to take himself out of these games. No, right? So yes, he can protect himself better. Right? He can get down, slide a little bit more, be more aware generally of his surroundings. But you got to take hits, man. This is a violent yeah. game. You're going to get blown up from time to time. The and shoulder it, injury was enough that he couldn't play for a week. Absolutely right. So. The team is going to be the group that they need to protect Trevor, and they need to decide now. Is Trevor Lawrence playing without practice at risk of not being as sharp as we need him to be now that we've gone and traded for Mac Jones? We've Mm -hmm. got a viable alternative because Lawrence said, if I can play, I'm going to be out there. If I can play and I feel like I'm not hurting the team, and maybe some weeks I did, you know, but I feel like I I did the best I could and went out there, and I would expect – I would expect the same of my teammates. So if I expect that from guys and late in the season to play and play through some stuff, it's football, you're going to have to, then I have to do the same. And I felt like that's what I was doing. And um, so, no, I think it's the biggest thing is just getting my body to a point where I can withstand a lot of these hits or whatever it is, but also limiting some of them as much as I can. So it's it's a balance of all that. Our boy getting a little yoked too now, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's part of it, right? He's trying to put on some good weight, um, some – Muscle mass that can help him withstand while, you know, keeping the yeah. flexibility and all that that you want to be able to play with. Yeah, and I am very solidly on if Trevor Lawrence is able to play, play. Like, it, it would have to be bad for him to not be able to play in a given week. I'm I'm willing to put Trevor out there, right? At this point, right. Right, but- and I think he does a whole lot more to help you than he does to hurt you, even if he's playing hurt. But what if he's, let's say he's out there and he hasn't practiced – for two weeks. In the last two games, he's completed – he hasn't been terrible. He's completed maybe 58% of his passes, mm-hmm. right? And he just – really not helping you in the run game because he has to stay in the pocket more to protect himself. You know what I mean? Like, it's a fine line of determining is that better than the alternative that we have ready to come in. Clearly, last year they thought it was yeah. better than the alternative. I don't dispute that it may be a fine line, but it's, it's a fine line that it – it almost has to be a definite line for me, right? With Trevor Lawrence, there the shoulder was enough to say, all right, if he needs to miss a week, he needs it's, to miss a week. It's impacting your ability to throw the ball, right? But there was no other time during last season where I was like, why are they playing him? Yeah, like I never had that thought when I was watching Trevor Lawrence play. And if they're getting him ready for these games and they're going into the warmups and doing all that, and they're like, it, it looks but like was Trevor. that because. You didn't have confidence in C.J. Beathard to come in and do the job. No. Okay. It's because I have that confidence in Trevor. But his performance absolutely waned. It did. In the last quarter of the season, right? right. So we can have the confidence. I don't dispute that, but I think that's kind of what he's pointing to there, is that it, he's not denying that the performance may have waned with him having to play through all those things. But I, I also don't think the team is anywhere close to a point where – what he dealt with last year is going to be this season. Let's get the other guy in. Like I just don't think they look at Trevor Lawrence that way, and neither do I. And it may not be the case, but and I do love the fact that you got a quarterback that is, if I can, if I can play, if I'm I playing. can walk out to under center, yeah. I'm going to be out there. You got to stop me from doing it. You'd much rather have that 100%. than a guy who goes, oh, I don't feel right today. You know, yeah. like there are plenty of times I wish Blake Bortles had come 
to the sideline and gone, have you seen me warm up today? If it's a little breezy, guys. I think we all agree. <laughs> the wind is howling out there. Blake, it's perfectly still. We're playing in a dome today. Mm-hmm. Are you sure <laughs> that the door's not open somewhere? All right, um, this is a big question, mm-hmm. all right? Who's calling the plays? Yeah. All right? It's, there's been some, I don't know, general assumption because Doug Peterson hasn't been ultimately definitive on how it's going to end up that it's going to go back to Doug Peterson. At least that's been the wish from Jaguar fandom. Trevor Lawrence doesn't seem to see it that way. Um, he was asked if he knows who's going to call plays and who does he expect it to be, and uh, we'll combine those answers so you can listen in. I mean, whatever, whichever way that goes, we're going to – we're going to make the most of it and, and it's going to be great. I don't know. I haven't had any conversations about, you know, anything necessarily changing or staying the same. I, so I don't really know. I'm with you guys, but we've had success with, with both guys calling the plays in the past. And even, even last year, obviously we could have been better offensively, but uh, we did have some success. And I, I do like the continuity, the consistency that I, that I have with the press. I know them really well. You know, I think that that's a, that's a good thing that we're, we're keeping that intact because it's hard as a quarterback to change. I like where we're at, and I, I think that we've made some really necessary changes this offseason already, and now we just got to implement them and, and get great at it. You know, I think it's about creating creating an identity and, and being really good at what we do, um, and I think we have a clear vision and picture of what that is, and I'm excited, you know, and, and I'm expecting it to be pressed at this point because that's, that's kind of the direction we've been heading and, and what I what I expect and I'm not hearing anything. So that's, that's where we're going, and uh, I'm excited for it. I do want to know mm-hmm. – at what point last year was Trevor told that Press Taylor's taking over full-time play calling duties? You know what I mean? Like, how much lead time do you need to give your quarterback? Obviously, you want to involve him in every important decision or at least inform him yeah. as soon as possible. But, like, hey, Trev, you know, you're going to get a play call in your ear, whether it's Doug or, or Press. You know, now, now maybe you want to know that early so you can work a little bit more closely with that guy and make sure you've got the right input into – what kind of plays you like. Hey, I'm not really feeling this one. We're not running this well. Let's take this one off the sheet this week. But I would think, like, if this is decided that Doug Peterson is saying, you know what, if I'm going to go down, I'm going down swinging. And uh, play calling is one thing I do very well, and it's going to be me. Mm-hmm. I think your franchise quarterback could be among the first to know that, right? Yeah. So my guess is they haven't decided that. I'm not saying it's impossible that Doug Peterson – will decide to do that or at some point take it over, even if they start out with Press Taylor being the guy. But I think Trevor's answer, at least, is the first time we've heard anything that maybe taps the brakes on. Yes, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, hey, if it's Doug, it's news to me. Yeah, well, it's the first time we've heard anyone since it made it sound like Doug was at least seriously considering yes. it. You know, he didn't and say we don't want to burn press to the ground here early in the off season. Right. And so. there was a lot of excitement among the fan base of, all right, Doug's calling the plays. Like that was gonna, the reaction. Right. You never, know, to that. never mind the fact that two years ago they basically split it and press did a lot of good work. The in, second in halves time. were better than the first halves offensively for the team. So, you know, and but when you do have a change like that and things aren't going the way and remember last year we all thought Offense going to carry the defense, right? And it didn't start out that way. Well, Certainly what's not. different? What's different, Tony? Oh, other than Marvin Jones being gone, we got Calvin Ridley. That should be an upgrade. So it's got to be Press Taylor, Press Taylor, Press Taylor. I'm not saying Press Taylor didn't have faults, right? Certainly did. Any first time, full time play caller is going to have some, but it absolutely sounds like the quarterback. Um, now, what's he going to say if he was? Re- I would think. If you didn't like the way it went last year with that, that would have been communicated privately anyway. Trevor Lawrence is not going to wait until April and get up at a press conference and go, by the way, this has been nagging at me. Right? Here's how I feel. Here's how it. this bothered me. I didn't say anything, but now that it's April, let's bring this up. Mm-hmm. So, now that I've had some time to reflect on all of it. Should we, as people that want the Jaguars to excel, mm-hmm. should we just accept that, hey, if Trevor's good with it, we should be good with it. Or do we think, ah, well, Trevor's Trevor, and he's not going to throw press under the bus, and Trevor's going to try to make the best out of whatever the situation is. I, I think you can react to that however you whatever want Whatever fits to. your narrative. Yeah, like yeah. however you want to. I think Trevor is a savvy enough public guy mm-hmm. 
that when he gets asked that kind of question, he knows the politically correct answer is they can both do the job hey. really well. I like what we've done the last couple of years. Great. I'm looking forward to 2024. Yes. Like that's the correct answer from the quarterback if no one else is going to give the definitive answer it on it. It could he's, also be the real answer. Right. Though. Like he's not the guy to give whatever the real answer is. But it could be. The, it, he right, could. Like, if you felt if that way. If he had way, been told the real answer. You know, and he's like, yeah, uh, you know, I, I really didn't think it was on press. I could have thrown it better. Sure, he called right. some bad plays, but I made some bad throws. Ridley ran some bad routes, or this guy had some drops, or that guy did whatever. And sure, you know, it's it's all these things. But um, that was, I thought, uh, about as newsworthy of as anything. It's not yeah. definitive, but it's a strong lean. Yeah, that that's the direction that they're going, at least to open up. The offseason. Chris Taylor is going to have a lot to do with what they do. Obviously. On offense. Right. But ult- will he have the ultimate down by down say? We'll at the see. moment, it appears. Yeah. But, you know, subject to change, right? It changed Absolutely. in one direction. It could change in the other direction. We've seen coaches do that. Team gets on a losing streak. That's it. I've got to do I'm, something. I, I, I got to put it on me. Yeah. Right. I'm going to take it. And let's hope it doesn't take a losing streak. We're going 17 and 0, is what I heard. This year, you ready to up your ante this year from <laughs> sixteen and one? Um, well, I, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say I doubt it as well. Uh, John Osier from Jaguars.com, the senior writer, joins us next to discuss all things Jaguars. If you want to get in and weigh in on anything you've heard this morning or anything that's on your mind, Jaguar related, six four one ten ten on the All Pro Roofing phone lines or the text line designed by Lifetime Enclosures. This is Jaguars today on ten ten XL and ninety two point five FM. Jaguars today from the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. It's a weight loss Wednesday on 1010XL. Awaken 180 Weight Loss, your long-term solution for weight loss. There are moments in every life when we're faced with a choice that could change everything. He's going for it. Great glorious day. Choose 1010XL. Hacker here, and I'm loving the doors that are now opening now that I'm down almost 50 pounds. Oh, yeah. And those results are in just seven weeks with Awaken 180 weight loss. By doors, I mean opportunities I've avoided because of my weight. Like an all-day adventure to SeaWorld or spending three days at Walt Disney World. Did I gain the normal five to ten pounds I would have at Disney? Of course not. In fact, I lost three pounds last week at Disney thanks to the good folks at Awaken 180. Awaken 180 travels with you and I'm eating all sorts of foods, salmon, ground beef, broccoli, cabbage, collard greens, you name it. It's not a lie when I say I'm eating to lose weight is the only way to lose weight. Do what we all did, Matt, Mike, and myself. Call Awaken 180 Weight Loss, 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800 or go on Online, awaken180weightloss.com. Imagine a complete one-stop shop for all your company's technology needs. A Jacksonville business who keeps their customer service local so you never get outsourced to a distant call center. When your company is ready for faster support for Mac's voice over IP phone systems or access control, discover why so many business owners select Total Business Systems. Call 604-6900, 604-6900 or jacksitexperts.com. Life isn't the same without live music. Players Grill Mandarin has Samuel Sanders performing covers and original music this Saturday at 8 p.m. Jam out with this local singer-songwriter while enjoying tasty food everyone can enjoy. Players Grill Mandarin, where the neighborhood meets. Home of the Jaguars. WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. It's Kubota Orange Days. Your golden chance to score a deal that will make your neighbors green with envy. Shop the year's best selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. And get the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off L3302 tractors. Coastal Equipment on New Kings Road and in McClenney. Coastal Equipment. Mueller Air Conditioning presents Are You Cool? Today's challenger, a corporate management manager from Jacksonville, Florida. Meet Les Blankston. Yeah, hi, Bob. That is a remarkably beige suit there, Les. Tell us, why are you on the show? (laughs) Well, I just replaced my old air conditioner with a new one from Bueller, and I'm just so comfortable these days, I wondered... 
Am I cool now? Let's find out, Les. Go ahead and spin the wheel. <laughs> That's right, Les. By upgrading your old AC to a more energy-efficient model from Bueller Air Conditioning, you'll save money, save energy, and proudly show your family that you are cool. <laughs> Do you think I should get a mohawk? Uh, pace yourself, Les. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Attention real estate agents, loan officers, and mortgage professionals. Trust your real estate closings to the expertise of St. John's Title, LLC. As a board-certified attorney-owned and operated firm with years of experience, St. John's Title provides the utmost of precision and professionalism. With conveniently located offices and in-home remote closing options, our customer-first approach ensures a seamless process tailored to your timeline. Join our team of experts and five-star testimonials from customers across the First Coast. Choose St. John's title. Test your aim to help local kids succeed. It's the 6th Annual Mackenzie Noel Wilson Foundation Clay Shoot to support the Boys and Girls Clubs of Northeast Florida and Mackenzie's Camp Deep Pond, Thursday, May 30th at Jack's Clay Target Sports. Get your team and the Boys and Girls Club take care of the rest. Ammo, cart, clays, breakfast bites, lunch, and goodies. Proceeds benefit 56 area clubs serving over 5,200 area kids every day. Go to bgcnf.org slash events. If you owe the IRS and can't pay, now is the time to call J. David Tax Law. After a two-year hiatus, the IRS has resumed their aggressive collections letters. Don't wait. Call J. David Tax Law or visit jdavidtaxlaw.com. This is Molly McDonald with your 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Local Sports Update. Brought to you by J. David Tax Law. The Gators baseball team redeemed themselves by run ruling the JU Dolphins 12-1 last night. Tyler Shelnett led the bats with his first career multi-homer game. Jack Caglin was the talk of the night after a 516-foot home run. Head coach Kevin O'Sullivan is pleased with his team, but still believes they are using one too many pitchers to get through these games. At some point, we're going to have to really put this thing together on the mound. And it's not like we're not capable. There's too many free passes. We're using one too many pitchers to get through the first half of the game, the first, you know, whatever part of the game. But we're always one pitch away or one inning away. It's fortunate enough for us that we were able to take advantage of the 10 run rule tonight because then it shortened the game. Round one of the Kelly Cup playoffs are tomorrow as the Jacksonville Icemen face off against the Florida Everblades at home. Puck drop 7 o'clock. It's 78 degrees at 11 o'clock. Time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. <laughs> oh no. With Jaguars.com's John Osher. Brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. On 1010XL. All right, another hour to go here on Jaguars today. This morning, we'll go until noon. Helmets and heels coming up after that. XL Primetime, the Franchise Show, and on we go throughout the day here on 1010XL. It is Wednesday. John Osher has arrived from Jaguars.com. Greetings, John. Guys, how are you? We're well. How are you? Just trying to get adjusted here. New seat. Is it a new seat? <laughs> new straight back seat. So. Oh, you don't have to. I mean, we, we have no, other like ones. They, like they switch all the time. I don't know. Everyone has their own personal preference as mm-hmm. to what chair they use. Yeah, the broken one's over there in the corner. Yeah. So I think, I think Dempsey's probably a don't sit in my chair guy. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm so like, much, yeah. I, I want the, you know, I, I think ones? they're all the, yeah, I prefer one that's not broken, but sure. yeah, I'm not that picky about it, you, you know? I don't want one that's a low rider. You know, I don't no. want to be sitting just off the ground, mm-hmm. even though I'm tall enough to see over the counter. A couple weeks ago, I was laying down in here. So it's, <laughs> it's it happens, funny. man. You know, really yeah. you were exhausted, nice. though, from, nice. from all the, the Q&A, the, the mailbag all, all writing. All the pre-draft speculation. So, uh, what did you hear from Trevor that stood out to you yesterday? Uh, you know, I think the fact that, uh, you know, it took till mid March to really feel right. Wasn't surprising. Sort of confirmed, I think, that he was really beat up. Uh, he sort of echoed what Doug said at the uh, at the owners' meetings, the combine, or whatever. In that, there's clearly a focus. Uh, and I think it's going to be beaten in all off season of not only the team needs to protect, and he needs to focus on protecting himself. Needs you know. Uh, whatever that entails, getting rid of the ball, not 
uh, playing hero ball, whatever, being a little better at that. Because uh, I think I think everybody saw the need that uh, the starting quarterback needs to be practicing the last six weeks of the season. So I think that's a theme of theirs. Uh, as far as the contract stuff, which was obviously big, you know, relatively news, I, I think most people knew they'd been talking. Uh, he'd like to get it done. The rest of it sort of sounded like things that you say – when you're starting a negotiation, there wasn't really any huge news, I don't think. But hey, it just addressed. seemed to me like Tony on the the contract front, like mm-hmm. it's gonna happen. You know, like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, if we can get it done this summer, great. But there's not a whole I'm lot not of really drama. Stra- it's not yeah. right. I, I'm not gonna change the way I prepare or focus, or it's not gonna be something lingering over my head. I'm pretty. That's how what I took yeah. away from it. And anyway. I think that's the that's the vibe you get from the times that you know. Trent has talked about it, which isn't much in, in in sort of the early lob questions I would call them this off season of where you had on Trevor. It's been more of a you know it's you know, well, we all wanted Trevor done. to go fourteen and three every year as a starter or better, right. right? But despite the disappointing way the season ended last year, it has helped architect back to back winning seasons mm-hmm. for the first time in a long time for this franchise. And so, John, they've got a number one overall pick quarterback who, while he may not have rewritten all the NFL record books, is still a very promising player with mm-hmm. a lot of experience under his belt at the age of 24. He wants to be here. Right. You know, and I really – and Tony and I were talking about this. That's it good it seems genuine. Like, he, like Josh Allen genuinely wanted thinking that. thinking about the weeds of this, right? Like, oh, he wasn't this, he wasn't this at this time. But the point you just made, I think, is, is the big picture. Both sides want to get it done. Uh, you know, I always use the analogy. Look, I know Trevor has flaws right now, but I I also don't want to be the guy standing in the parking lot watching him drive off for the last time. Oh my god! I, I, I don't know, <laughs> so, and I don't think he'd be any at the worst. I think he'd go second in this draft at the worst. Uh, I, I can understand Caleb Williams. His upside is huge, yeah. right? And and I can. But he might see- not go. He might not go second. He might still go first. He might. Yeah. He might. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. At worst, right. I think he goes second. We saw a proposed mock trade with Minnesota coming up to get J.J. McCarthy, right? At, at right. like four or five. Yeah. You they had to give to get their Trevor two Lawrence. firsts and their first next year. That's right. three firsts yeah. for J.J. McCarthy, who has yet to throw a pass in the NFL. At right. least you have a and sense. He has major questions. Right. I mean, yeah. Trevor is not perfect. There's no question about it, but man, at 24 years old, there are a lot of teams that would like the right. chance to build but around that guy. But you've also maybe seen the floor, and the floor is not bad. It's not atrocious. Right. It's not catastrophic, right? right. It's like, ah, oh, can't we be better? But right, yeah. You know, Peyton Manning, and we've used him as an example. What was it, ninth year when he won his first Super yeah. Bowl? Yeah. You know, and my first year covering him was 01, which was his fourth year, and that was the year that. Uh, down year, yeah. Yeah, he threw four picks against San Francisco, and Mora came in and uh, lost his marbles over the playoffs. Right, we're not saying you have to as Jag fans just saying, oh, we're going to stink for the next half decade or whatever. No, I mean, it may right. it may, ne- may never happen, but it could happen this year. You just – you don't know. I don't know. Um, The play calling Tony and I were talking about mm-hmm. uh, it certainly seems like Press Taylor, in Trevor's mind, there's – he's like, I haven't been told anything. At least right. th- that's what he's – so – did this get – by by the fact that Doug Peterson didn't definitively come out and say, we're going to run it back exactly the same yeah. way, did people run too much with that, or do you think this is still something that's in a state of flux? You know, I – there's part of me that I don't know that Doug sees it as as big of an issue as everybody else. Because I do, I do think he looks at it and says, Press and I call games the same way. We're in lockstep. All the stuff we've talked mm-hmm. about. Um, so, I think Doug, when he was asked – the first time he said it was at the Combine, which was, what, late February. Mm-hmm. He clearly had time to think about it, but I think he gave an honest answer of, you know, I haven't really decided yet, and I don't think he thinks it's something he has to decide uh, tomorrow. So uh, I, w- I would be surprised if Doug goes a different direction um, because I think he believes that that whatever was, quote, wrong with the offense – I don't think he thought for a minute that it was Press Taylor's play call. So if he doesn't think that, I don't know that he's going to quote reverse field. Um, I don't have a great insight into that, but that's how it feels. It did feel like Trevor is willing to point out the problems that he does have in his game. 
right? And he may not point him out specifically, but the staying healthy, you know, live for the next play, all these different kind of things that are going on. How does a player get better at those kind of things at this point in an off season that you can well, carry over into actually playing football? Um, you know, the, the that's part of it. Uh, the other part that he said right after the season uh, was he knows he has to get better turnovers. He knows mm-hmm. he has to not uh, give the ball up in the pocket. Uh, I think that's more of an issue with the team than the interceptions. The interceptions sort of ballooned a little bit after the injuries last year. But it's it's the not protecting the ball in the pocket that concerns him more. Um, right now, I think it's just just like when you were a student in class. You just study it, you study it, you beat it into your head, you beat it into your head. And then each game you play moving forward, you try to get a little bit better at it. You try to, oh, okay, this is what it, is what we talked about. It's in your head. I don't. I never have believed that that much that you do in on May first in unpadded work mm-hmm. translates that much into real time. But you can get it uh, again to where it's something you emphasize. And every NFL coach will tell you if you emphasize it in practice, you see it in the game. So um, that's really all you can do. For us to sit here and predict how it'll play out, uh, come talk to us week one, right? I mean, that's – I wish I had a better answer, but you'll just emphasize it wouldn't, all off Wouldn't it be better coming to you after week one to see how uh, Maybe actually... during week one, maybe halftime. By halftime of week one. <laughs> Text me. All right. How's it going well, so far? Hey, what's up? You know, what's up, John? So? So? so I'm just going to send you so, so question right. mark. Yeah, I mean, but, but it's it's a huge topic. I just don't know how – uh, maybe you can get better at it during OTAs of have, ha- having drills where you escape the pocket. But that, to me, feels like a real-time thing that you've got to learn when it's real. All right, let's come back and uh, talk more about uh, Trevor Lawrence and the off-season program here a little bit from Foyer Lewican as well as he spoke yesterday. And you have your question of the day presented by Chad and Sandy Real Estate that's out there for you if you'd like to weigh in. It's a simple one, simple fill-in-the-blank. In five years, Trevor Lawrence will blank however you see fit to answer that uh send us your reply uh primarily at md underscore 1010 xl but hit up at 1010 xl fat tony and at 1010 xl denmark as well and uh, you can always hop in the all pro roofing phone lines with a text line designed by lifetime enclosures at 641 1010 with john Ozier of jaguars.com this is jaguars today rolling on on 1010 xl 92.5 fm Hey, folks, Mike Dempsey here for Dandy Foods. Man, they've got such delicious offerings out there. Turkey and provolone, my new current favorite. Really, tuna salad's always going to be my favorite from Dandy. I've been a Dandy customer for over 30 years. That's right. Well, heck, I've only been around for about half the time. They've been a company for over 65 years delivering some of the finest food on the go here on the First Coast of anybody. That's right. Dandy is a local company. The Thompson family founded them nearly 70 years ago now, and they just constantly put out a consistent line of sandwiches and subs that are absolutely fresh, delicious, great variety, great prices, and all the other quick and convenient goodies that you could pick up at an area gate station. But I'm telling you, try the Monster Turkey and Provolone. It's absolutely delicious. Had me reconsidering my sandwich choices the next time I swing into a gate station. It might not be an auto pick for that tuna salad. Whatever you're hungry for, Danny's going to have something. And Duval, they're the name to know. So do what I do when you are hungry. Go out and make yours a dandy and do it today. It's a Weight Loss Wednesday on Jaguars Today from the JOI Studios. Awaken 180 Weight Loss, your long-term solution for weight loss. Dan Hicken. Does that make your sphincter tingle? Jeff Prosser. I understand you're pretty funny as a DJ, and, well, comedy is a kind of hobby of mine. Well, well, actually, it's a little more than just a hobby. Weekday mornings. Reader's Digest is considering publishing two of my jokes. Really? On 1010XL. Hey, Hicken here. I couldn't be any happier than to join the George Moore Chevrolet family. When I say family, I mean it. Visit their beautiful showroom today off Atlantic Boulevard. Find out exactly what I'm talking about. No pressure, just friendly help. And whether you want a car, a truck, SUV, electric, pre-owned, you name it, George Moore Chevrolet has it. If you can't make it over to Atlantic Boulevard, no problem. MooreChevy.com is easy to navigate as any site you will try. It's never been more easy to use. George Moore Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Hey everybody, it's Mike Dempsey here for Pella Windows and Doors. Look, obviously, the warmer temperatures are already here. And if you're like me, you want that oppressive Florida heat to stay outside your house. That's why I'm such a fan of Pella Windows and Doors. By now, we know that windows are the number one way that heat gets in and the cold gets out. 
So when you're ready for the stylish design and energy efficiency that comes from Pella Windows and Doors, visit their showroom on Phillips Highway, just north of Bay Meadows, or you can always find them online at PellaJacks.com. That's Pella Windows and Doors. For the greenest, luscious lawn on the block, choose the local legends, Roundtree Sod. Don't just settle for ordinary. Let Roundtree Sod deliver you a picture-perfect lawn. To get a free estimate, call 7414-SOD. 7414-SOD. Where on your body is the weenus? The answer next. When you call Southern Oak and file a claim, you'll be handled by our hand-picked vendors who will analyze any roof, storm, or water damage. It'll save money for you. Our family protecting yours. Southern Oak Insurance. The weenus is your elbow skin and can be pinched as hard as you want and it will never cause pain. Southern Oak Insurance, our family protecting yours. Tired of running out of hot water? It's probably time for a new water heater. Call Duck Duck Rooter, the plumbing pros who specialize in water heater installation and service, including tankless water heaters, gas, or electric. Call us today for service. DuckDuckRooter.com. Nobody gets in the war room, but 1010XL will get you close. That's good. That's very good. 1010XL's draft coverage is brought to you by Renewal by Anderson Windows and Doors. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Homeowners and investors, the choice of title company is yours. When making that decision, choose the team of St. John's Title, LLC. As board-certified expert attorney-owned firm with decades of experience, we provide the utmost in precision and professionalism. Conveniently located offices and in-home remote closing options, we serve your needs. Whether refinancing or selling your property, our customer-first approach is tailor-made to your timeline. With a seasoned team of experts and five-star testimonials from customers across the First Coast, call or visit St. John's Title today. I'm with Greg from Cycles of Jacksonville, and when the sun's out, it's time to ride at Triumph. Tell me this, Greg. They've got new pricing that's going to bring more people to the showroom to check them out. They do. They've got two hot new models, both under 6000 one under 5000 Same great, legendary Triumph quality and ride. you got to come see it. And it's a big, heavy motorcycle underneath you. It is. It's all Triumph. Log on, cyclesofjacksonville.com, or check them out in the showroom. They're on Atlantic near Regency. Rick Ballou for Carlson Dental. You know, I've been telling you this for quite some time because it's true. I hate going to the dentist, or at least I used to hate going to the dentist. I had total anxiety, and then I tried sedation. Light sedation for cleaning and deep sedation as well for cavities and root canals. Folks, it's an incredible experience. So don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Go to carlsondentalgroup.com. That's carlsondentalgroup.com for all of your dental needs. Looking for a great place to enjoy some craft creations and soak up some scenery? Bernadina's Mocama Beer Company is a must-see and must-try. Nassau County knows it. Visitors need to find out about it. Mocama means near the big water where the sun is born. And if you visit their tap room in Bernadina Beach, you'll see how they've mastered equal parts precision and art in creating great flavors from IPAs to pilsners, lagers, and sours, plus plenty more. Mocama.com, Mocama Beer Company. Start an adventure and find them in Bernadina. Ever buy a gym membership but don't ever use it? Who hasn't? E.T. here, sports fans. And instead, I send plants and flowers to people I love from Kuhn Flowers, home of the beautiful window display on Beach Boulevard. Now that's money well spent. Kuhn Flowers. Spring is here, and along with it comes the best golfing days of the year. Come out to Hidden Hills and test out our Arnold Palmer signature masterpiece and enjoy the popular Hills Grill after your round. Book your tee time today, hiddenhillsgc.com. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. All aboard! <laughs> oh no. With Jaguars.com's John Osher. Brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars on 1010XL. All right, coming up, we'll run through those uh, trade up, trade down scenarios that I ran past Tony there. Uh, your your final answer was well, if you had to choose one, trade back, right? Trade back, yeah. Okay, based on those specific yes scenarios that were laid out there, uh, we'll go around the league here in a couple minutes. Here from Foyer Lulican, that seems like a lot to do on this program. But hmm. uh, first, we'll go to Stephen Nakatee and find out what's on his mind at six four one ten ten. Steve, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? Doing well. What's good. up, buddy? 
Good. I was just responding back to the uh, the question on Gabbert. The I'm not Gabbert, but uh, Trevor <laughs> Lawrence. Uh, the five year. Uh, where where will he be? Yes. Um, you know, I was all on board with Trevor, but you know, unfortunately, I feel like he's going to be similar to what Gabbert uh, is doing a backup, trying to uh, vying for a backup position in the NFL. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Please, I hope I'm wrong, but um, we'll see. Uh, thoughts on that? Uh, I think you're crazy, yeah, personally. <laughs> I don't nuts. think he's I, – I, Blake Gabbert had shown nothing and still has shown nothing in terms of being a competent starting quarterback yeah. in the National Football League. We were doing shows every week after games where, you know, it's like, you remember that play? I think he's coming in. One it. play. Yeah. yeah. Right. We, we had a you former know? co-host of ours who loved to – to watch him complete one pass I think over it's the middle about go, I happen. think it's clicking now. Yeah. I think it's starting think to it's click with this guy. It's like, yeah. that's what you were holding on to with that guy. Trevor is so far above that. Like That's 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 crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, that's that's what – here's here are the yardage totals for Blaine Gabbard at this similar stage of his career. He had thrown for 2,214 yards in his first year. His second year, he followed up with 1,600, and then he polished off a quick 481 in year three with Ugh. the Jacks. So you think Trevor Lawrence's trajectory – is putting him on that path. Yeah, I, it's very again, interesting. I, I don't know where Trevor will be in five years in terms of starting quarterbacks, but I, I would be very surprised if he's a backup. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, yes. it just to, to throw. He, I mean, at first, I'm, is he Freudian slipping that he Gabbard because we've had mm-hmm. disappointment? He, obviously, it was clear he's trying to say, "Oh, he's just Gabbard 2.0," and that's fine. And you're entitled to sure. feel that way yeah. if you want to. I mean, I think you're crazy, but that's fine. <laughs> you're not the first person I think is crazy. Uh, tr- Blank Gabbard in his career has 9,400 passing yards. He'll hit that 10,000 <laughs> mark, I'm sure, if he hangs around mm-hmm. long yeah. enough. It'll be fine. That's what he, I mean, it's right. I mean, come on. I just, yeah. So, there. I think we've spent more than enough mm-hmm. time on that. And, look, could Trevor Lawrence flame out? and be? It won't be because, like, by this time, Blank Gabbard's already a backup. He's he's not a guy anymore. His right. career Fourth with the Jaguars year. was ending. Right, it was and over. He w- and he went where? He went to San Fran to, for right. like yeah. a, a pennies for like a six round pick yeah, just to dump it. That's right. Yeah. Right now, right. He, that was the stage he was at. He was yeah. getting dumped now this off season in right. in their similar careers. Yep. After so, throwing for less than five hundred yards. Yeah, I I, I understand the trepidation and the listeners' part of not knowing what Trevor's going to be. I don't think he's going to be that. Yeah, be better I, than that. Yeah. yeah, way, way, way better than that. But that's my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. As uh, Terrence put it, you know, in our question of the day, oh in gosh. five years, Trevor Lawrence will blank, be a Winnipeg Blue Bomber, oh, is what he put. So at least I bet gosh. he starts for him, though. Come on now. He'll Come start, on. Right, He'll he will start not be a for backup, the Blue Bombers, right. though, won't he? Yeah. That'll fulfill the promise. All right, uh, let's let Tony take us around the rest of the National Football League. Now, Gems Around the NFL, brought to you by Beaches Jewelry and Pawn in Jack's Beach. According to head coach Shane Steichen, Indianapolis quarterback Anthony Richardson is in a really good spot, should be good to go for practices as he continues to recover from that shoulder surgery. Cleveland quarterback Deshaun Watson is throwing full speed, according to head coach Zach, or according to Zach Johnson at The Athletic, with the expectation that Watson will definitely be ready for training camp and should be able to participate in the team's OTAs this year. Detroit left tackle Taylor Decker said on Tuesday that he had foot and ankle surgery already in this offseason, that he was able to begin working out again in February. Decker did say that he was happy with the decision to get the surgery and that he is feeling really good. Miami Dolphins GM Will Greer said on Tuesday that the team will be exercising the fifth-year options on wide receiver Jalen Waddle and linebacker Jalen Phillips. And Denver wide receiver Cortland Sutton was not in attendance for the Broncos offseason program beginning on Monday. Tom Pellicero said that Sutton does not seem to have any plans to participate in the Broncos' voluntary portion of the offseason as he seeks to get a new deal done with the team. Sutton, a second-round pick in 2018, has two years remaining on a four-year, $60.8 million deal that he signed in November of 2021. Somebody put a uh, side-by-side, and situations are different, but they put up uh, Christian Watson's rookie numbers versus Cortland Sutton's numbers last year Mm -hmm. on, like, uh, so many less targets. And it was like, and this guy is holding out? Like, are you kidding me? He had that run... You know, in the back half of the season, he had, Sutton he, did he where he caught touchdowns, touchdowns yeah. every right. week. Scored, ended up scoring yeah. 10. Yeah. 
right? Which is great, and that's fine. But, but he had, what, like 57 targets? Yeah, something like that on the season? Like, it was crazy, the volume of yeah, touchdowns. He did get a lot of touchdowns. He and, uh, hey, that's their problem, not ours. Um, because we're going to have Roma Dunze. At least right. if the trade goes down this way. By the way, mm-hmm. hey, what, you know what they're going to give up? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, John. Um, what, like, what percentage would you give on the Jags trading up at all? At any amount of spots, you know, it could be two spots to grab Terry and Arnold, could be whatever. Yeah, I'd say, I don't know, 25. Yeah, I'd, something like that. I one don't and five, one think and four. that will be something they yeah, – I would be surprised, not shocked, because you're never shocked with anything like that. But I, I would not think that would be the direction. I think if they trade up for a guy, it might be a corner, and they trade up to like 14 to get ahead of Indianapolis, who clearly sure, – yeah. Needs I don't think you do help. much more than that. I don't think you give up a ton more equity than that for a corner, because it's. But I, yeah. But I if you one love, if you love yeah. one of the top two guys and are at risk of missing out on both of them, and you want to get ahead of a division rival who may also be yeah. coveting oh, yeah. one of those guys, I, I could see that move. So here are the proposed scenarios up and back that I ran by Tony earlier at Pro Football Network. All right, Jags give up to get to number eight to take Roma Dunze. Who I think they'd love to have, okay? 17-48, your fifth rounder this year, 153, and your second next year. You get eight. You get nothing else back. Okay, that's that's scenario one. Okay, you get eight. It's a first, two seconds, and a fifth. Scenario two, um, Dallas Turner slides in the draft, and he's available at 17, prompting Philadelphia to send you an offer. They're coming up from 22. They're giving you their second-round pick, which is like 53, I think, but you have to give up 96 and 114 going back. Now, if you're going to try to trade from 96 to 53, it would take a hell of a lot more than 114. It would take like your second the following year. Yeah, okay? you're, you're giving up more than you're getting. You think you're giving up more than you're getting in this? You're moving five spots in the first round. You're, you take, you're packaging 96 and 114 and getting 53 okay, I'm back. sorry, I had it reversed, yeah. Okay. So you're probably netting more right. on the end. But you also, from 53 to 116, you got nothing now, right. right? You got no third. You lost one of your fourths. In that scenario, a bunch of guys the Jags like were on the board, but the top two corners were gone, and they went for Cooper DeGene. Putting aside who they take with that, because we don't know what the board would look like. Obviously, that move up to eight would be for Adunze. Would you like – that move up, or would you like to move back and collect more for, like, the third corner as opposed to the third wide receiver? Probably back because I'll just – I'll be swayed in this thought by the fact that people think this is an incredibly deep receiver draft. Mm-hmm. And to go up for a receiver uh, and give up a lot in a deep receiver draft seems counterintuitive. The, the other side of that is, is if you think the kid's special – then you go get special. That's always been yeah. right, and that's the thing, right? So, like everyone that has a top three this year, right. and it's the same top three, and right. they're all seen as a cut above. I read one analyst uh, today said that Brian Thomas was in last year's draft to be the number one receiver in last year's draft. So if right. you look at it that way, I mean, Marvin Harrison, well, he's right. also better than a lot of guys who've come down the right. line recently. Uh, and just because this draft is super rich at that position at the top, he could end up being a huge value at 17 even you Brian know? Thomas yeah if yeah. you feel that way about him yeah th- th- that's a name that certainly sticks out when you're talking to people as there's a few guys in that mid first round who could wind up being special he, he's at the top of the list you never know because if he if they knew he'd be in the top 10 but that's the thought do you have any sense for how they feel about Cooper DeGene whether that be at 17 or any point in the first really. round no okay I mean, it's uh I'd be guessing I hate to tell you that. When's the last time they brought you in the war room and asked you uh, what you would do? <laughs> that's where I'm headed next. Are you Not going yet. right after the show? You couldn't yeah, have done that yesterday? That's why I've got to get out of here would have been convenient for early. us. Yeah. Is that <laughs> right? You got to roll? Yeah, I got to roll. All right. We got to figure out next week, by the way, uh, what we're doing yeah. around these parts. It's going to be a busy week, but we'll figure that all out. All right. Why don't we do this? Um, instead of trying to force in a few foyer Lewican thoughts, we'll take a break here. We'll come back with a couple. We'll take a look at some of the responses to the question today, and we'll give our best answer to it as well. In five years, Trevor Lawrence will blank. What would you fill in the blank with out there? That's your Jaguars Today 
Chad and Sandy Real Estate Question of the Day. This is Jaguars Today on 1010XL 92.5 FM. It's a Weight Loss Wednesday on 1010XL. A week in 180 weight loss. From the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. The home of the home team you grew up with. Big play. Look at the release by Jimmy Smith as he then clears the rest of the Dolphins secondary. And wow, talk about deja vu. 1010XL. It's about time for a technology support company to speak the language of your business and have local people who actually answer the phone when you need answers now. It's time to call Total Business Systems. Whether your company needs managed IT services, video surveillance, or voice and data wiring, discover why Total Business Systems is on the Jacksonville Business Journal's Fast 50. Call 604-6900, 604-6900, or jacksitexperts.com. This is the sound of turning small bets into legendary wins. Only on the Hard Rock Bet Sportsbook app. The sound of parlays. The sound of paydays. The sound of watching the game will never be the same. Hard Rock Bet has already paid out millions and millions in parlays to people across Florida. Download Hard Rock Bet now, and if your first bet doesn't win, get up to $100 back as a bonus bet. Offered by the Seminole Tribe of Florida, must be 21 plus and physically present in Florida to play. Terms and conditions apply. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1 888 Admit It. Now those sound like some well oiled machines. Hey, Glenn here from BB Oil. If you have equipment that needs fuel and only want the best for your engines, we've got you covered. From fuel for boats to construction sites with large equipment, we deliver all types of fuel and lubricants. We also have tanks from 250 gallons to 2,000 gallons and larger if you need them. Give me a call and let's talk. Find us online, bb-oil.com. I'm just happy to have a roof over my head. You've heard that saying a bunch probably through the years, but what if it leaks? That's never good. Who do you call? How can you be sure they're any good? Who to trust? Well, remember this. Preferred Roofing guarantees to educate and inform their customers on such a big decision as replacing a roof. Let their consultants help you make an informed choice that you're sure to feel good about. Master Elite Certified Contractors, Preferred Roofing is who you need to call. Tell them Joe C. sent you. He's not Pistol Pete. He's Pete Prisco. Been on the wanted list almost 20 years. CBS Sports senior NFL writer Pete Prisco joins the Frangie Show Friday afternoons on 1010XL. Brought to you by Showtime Sports Cards and Collectibles. This is Joe C. from XL Primetime and stoked to crank up the 9 after 5 once again at the Golf Club of Southampton. Every Wednesday, a little after 5, the gang at Southampton will be hosting us with a new game, and I'm inviting you to be a part of it. Now, through the summer stretch, break up the week with a little hump day fun every Wednesday. Call 287-PLAY to get on the tee sheet. There'll be food afterwards and prizes, including playing for a membership at the Golf Club of Southampton. Call 287-PLAY and hit the tee with Joe C. This is Hayes Carline for First Florida Credit Union. I bank with First Florida Credit Union because I trust them. I can always count on them when it comes to the vast services they provide. First Florida Credit Union was voted Best Bank in the 2023 Best of Bold City Community Choice Awards, and it's easy to see why. I go to the branch off 210 in St. Johns County and the new Durban location, but they have 10 branches in the Jacksonville area. You need to be banking with First Florida Credit Union. They're enriching people every day. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing opportunity lender. We love talking sports on 1010XL, and I-9 Sports love giving kids the perfect way to grow up playing sports. Summer and fall registration is underway, and if you log on to i9sports.com, you'll see all they've got to offer for kids three and up. And don't forget to enter 1010 in the promo code for a discount on registration. Year-round sports all across the First Coast, from St. John's, Duval to Clay. Summer and fall registration open right now. Fort Family Field in Westside Middle or online at i9sports.com. Get your kids in the game with i9. Are your kids ready to play this summer? Come check out the Y. Summer is a time for kids to explore new things and expand the limits of their imagination. At the Y Summer Camp, every day is a new adventure. Kids can learn about STEM, arts and humanities, athletic sports, outdoor games, and more. Registration is now open, but space is limited, and spots are filling up quickly. Learn more and find your adventure at fcymca.org. Search Summer Day Camp. Hello, this is Father Nicholas Lowe, and I want to talk to you about not being afraid of the crosses of life. Life can be difficult. Maybe today you're carrying a cross of worry or stress. 
Let me encourage you to remember that when Christ got on the big cross at Golgotha, he destroyed all the little crosses that we face in our life. He set us free from fear, worry, and anxiety. Our job is not to be carried by the cross, but to be carried by our faith. For more inspiration, log on to stjohnthedivine.com. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Nobody knows the Jags like Johnny O. Oh, no. Brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. On 1010XL. And we're getting down to the home stretch here for the 2024 NFL Draft. So our plan next week is to have some of our draft correspondents, guys like Tony Pauline and Chad Ryder, join us on the program. By the way, Chad Ryder just did a piece. Um, every team's basically like dream two players in the first two rounds. Like what would be the perfect mm-hmm. combination that you could land? I found it to be very interesting for the Jags. Uh, Johnny is going to join us Tuesday. Tuesday 11. Fired up. Then on Wednesday, we'll do our media mock draft, 89th annual. Uh, <laughs> on Thursday, we will bring in more local correspondents. At least we'll invite them to join us. Uh, guys like uh, Demetrius Harvey, John Shipley, uh, Hayes Carline at all. And uh, get their thoughts on what's going to happen. And we'll be, you know, half day away. And then Friday's all about you next week reacting to how you felt the Jags did, at least in round one. That's all we'll have a chance to react to on Friday. But that's kind of the tentative plan. By the way, the uh, the two players, the Jags, and I can't find uh, Chad's piece because, man, navigating NFL.com, they don't make it easy sometimes. They, do. they really oh, no. don't. It's like they, all right, we got a story up. It's up for two hours. Now we're going to hide it. Yeah, and, exactly. you know, maybe you'll find it a week from now. Maybe you won't. <laughs> anyway, he had uh, Fautano, the offensive tackle or offensive lineman, and basically said, he can Where, play anywhere for yeah. you this year that you need him to with an idea that he'll be a starting tackle for you next year. And Mason Smith, the defensive tackle, out of LSU in round two. And, you know, how well he thought he would pair with Eric Armstead and all this. Can you imagine? I mean, look, people want to talk about building through the line of scrimmage, right? Big yeah. uglies, never can go wrong right. with another good lineman. No receiver, no corner in the first two rounds. That would – you know, like, you can't have it all. Right, from a – from a philosophical team building view, there's nothing wrong with that. No, but uh, for a fan engagement point not, of view, I right. don't. I mean, look, some would love it. Others would be like, "What are we doing?" All right. You know, but uh, so I could I, easily see them not going receiver in the first two rounds. I, I'd be I surprised. could too. I'd be surprised if corners not there somewhere. Just I could I, though. I, I could like see they have looked at a lot of them, right? Like various kind. Like they visited with Terry and Arnold. Okay, sure. But they've also looked at a lot of mid-round guys, mm-hmm. right? And and knowing you can't get them well, on the they may take two. Maybe they do, yeah. right? But maybe they take two in the fourth, right? Right? Or maybe they take a third and a fourth, right? Yeah. And because you no, can't – you can go Tyson Campbell, Ronald Darby with guys like Monteric Brown. You've got some other experience. I'm not saying it's great, yeah. right? But, no, I know. okay, if you – if you if you're prioritize not that much fixing that, on defensive line, right? Right, then then maybe you're not as good in these other spots. And that's you know we all have our yeah. idea of what they need to prioritize, different ways to do it. Um, one thing they don't need to worry about is inside linebacker. Foye Lewican gets his contract extension with the team. Spoke yesterday and talked about his impression of new defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen. Yeah, so I knew a lot of the guys in Atlanta. Uh, hit him up right away about you know the kind of guy he is or the, how he coaches and stuff. Uh, pretty hard nosed, a lot of good energy coming from him. Uh, you know, already, you know, kind of runs a, a straight ship. The guys will respond very well to that, keeping guys accountable, and we're all going to play as hard as we can for him. Yeah, Foyer should know all the guys up there in Atlanta. So he talked to the guys he played with a couple years years. ago. Yeah, Uh, he was also asked about Nielsen and what he has learned early on here about his new scheme. Uh, we really haven't gotten too deep into schematics, but there's just watching the way that Atlanta played last year and the Saints before that. I think he got uh, a lot of his defense from that. Um, just watching the way they play. They play aggressive. They attack. They're downhill. They play fast all over. It's all about effort. And I think that's where he's going to keep our standard to, um, playing hard, playing aggressive. Uh, if we, we just take those um, outside of scheme, just take that style of play, I think a, a good deal of things will happen for us. Still waiting for the first – Coordinator to get a hired where one of his players says, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this passive scheme. We're going to sit back and see what happens. Oh, is Ryan aggressive? 
Apparently he is. Okay, well that, and is as is every defensive coordinator that it's ever been hired. I am waiting to cover my first passive defensive coordinator. We're gonna get after it. Yeah. Right? We're sorta of gonna go. We wanna get after the quarterback. All right. We wanna create turnovers. All right. I mean, oh. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, what or, or hey, yeah. man, I don't know what he's gonna run. <laughs> Might rush. I got my money. I don't know. Right. Nah, <laughs> kidding. Boy, he didn't say that. Um, so this is a good question. Was the message after two years from Mike Caldwell somehow growing stale with this defense last year. I don't know about stale. It's the NFL, so like every week, you know, you're playing for your life, you're playing for your job, you're playing for a lot of things, whatever your why is. Um, I don't think anything ever gets stale and monotonous. I think, you know, a new guy coming, you know, with, with his energy and passion, you maybe feel that. That might give you a little jump start. But at the end of the day, what you were doing last year wasn't working. So now that's why you have this new coach, and we're all excited to get this thing jumped off on the right way and improve ourselves, improve our defense. And we got new guys coming in who've, who've played on, you know, high caliber defenses. So whatever they're seeing, you know, we're all receptive to it. Whatever the coach wants us to do, we're receptive to it because we know we have to be better than last year. Look, stale or otherwise, it does. That's the bottom line. It has to be better, right? You can't, Tony. Uh, I mean, you can go on a run sometimes for a full season at last. Mm-hmm where you're just creating an abnormal amount of turnovers and your defense is prospering because of that. And I felt like the Jags were able to do that maybe for the first third or so of the season. It's tough to sustain that. No doubt. High level, especially when you don't have, like, you got two good pass rushers, but you don't have a down-in, down-out, consistent pass rush to create that pressure on the quarterbacks. It's interesting because Ryan Nielsen, John, talks about doing it a little bit in the reverse, right? Like, our coverage Mm -hmm. is going to help that pass rush. And we know they... They go hand in hand, but I think most people think pass rush leads to better coverage yes. is more of the standard, right? That's, that's what I always grew up on. So, yes. Um, and uh, I think, too, last year, when you stop stopping the run efficiently, then all of a sudden your turn- your turnover opportunities go way, way down because – the other team's not in as many bad down and distance. No, so, uh, right. The obvious passing situations. Yeah, which is where most turnovers come. Jaguars adding Eric Armstead from one of the better teams and defenses in the National Football League. And Foyer was asked about his addition yesterday. Great player, part of a great defense. So uh, not only his abilities on the field, but his leadership as well. Uh, holding that whole room to a standard. Uh, being able to be an example. And then coming, you know, seeing what he sees needs to, we need to do differently and um, try to implement things that he knows works the whole defense. It really added a really good player in the middle of that defensive line. You know what I mean? And it's it's almost – I think I don't think it's being overlooked, right? But a little it is. You think I mean, because it, of the timing, like it, yeah. he wasn't a free agent to open free agency for right. one thing. So it wasn't like a guy we discussed heavily going into it. He became available. Could we trade for him? Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, trade with Houston fell through. Bam. Yeah. The timing of it made some of the fan base react to, well, that's the pivot because they didn't get Calvin. Yes. Right? Like, that's how the fan base reacted. And it's like, well, no, they've the stated pretty clearly. The money was still in front of Calvin. Right. Like, even after the They Armstead could have done signing. both. If they needed to do both, they could have done both. That's the order mm-hmm. the deals got done. You know, Eric Armstead's here. Calvin Ridley isn't. That's the way it worked out. Yeah, he could quietly be... Because he's not a huge sack number guy, he could, quote, quietly be a big reason they're a lot better. Right. You don't need to be – if he's a like a six to eight sack guy. Right. And he's – That's major. Forcing impact. you to double team him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's as much benefit as anything yeah. that you get and a guy – And if he that, makes you better against the run. They, they sure. can't be as, as porous as they were the last six weeks. Right. He's a good all-around player, right. though. Uh, at least that's his reputation. Yeah, you know and that's that's uh, that's what you need. All of a sudden, what do you think about drafting a, a big defensive, like a space eater type to play in, like early? So but they've got over ten million a year wrapped up in Hamilton and uh, Roy Robertson Harris. Second round, not first. I'd be surprised. Like okay, either uh, one. Forty eighth pick. Yeah, I mean, it, you're it's, you're good with that. I I'm good with it because we've seen so much. Uh, if you're weak on the defensive line, I get it. So I'm just at, all right. So we drafted. You're a weak team. We drafted so Brian no Thomas in round one. Yeah. Okay? We have no corner, no corner help coming yet. Right. All right. We got wide receiver. We got no O line help. I'm just at, I, yeah, you know, that's I, kind of the, the. I don't think they'll do that. I would be fine with it because okay. um, I, 
I guess as as I get older and watch more and more football with more and more history in line it, line of scrimmage. If you're not good on the defensive line, you have a tough time winning games. All right, well, one of the guys that they count on to make them good on the defensive line is Trayvon Walker, and Foye was asked about what kind of growth he has seen from the now uh, soon-to-be third-year Jaguar. A lot of confidence in his own ability, I think, and then, you know, trusting his techniques that he's been practicing in the offseason, and then Josh playing well on top of that, and then them playing off of each other definitely did well. I think a relentless motor he's always had when – Things got tough in games. We told him, you know, we need sacks and we need pressure on the quarterback. See, I think he's always been able to pressure the quarterback about finishing. Uh, and I know some games they had a lot of pressures and no sacks. They would be in the sideline kicking themselves. I'm like, bro, we're winning. They'd be kicking themselves. Um, so I'm liking that out of them. But I think just that that pressure they put on themselves in order to be, I won't say perfect, but play at the higher, highest level of football that they know they can propel them to play that well. Foyer didn't duck away from how disappointing the back half of the season was last no, year. Neither of them did. Right, and they both seemed to carry it back with them to the podium, you know, speaking to the media for the first time since the season ended. And Foyer was asked about how can they make sure that kind of collapse doesn't happen again. Everybody's committed to doing things right this time around. Um, you know, you don't want to say – we don't want to get in that position again. And it starts from the first game all the way to the last, you know. Uh, but just keep it improving – Every week, no matter what the scoreboard is, you know, keeping our standard every week. Because sometimes you win games that you didn't play your best. Now you don't learn from them if you're not trying to get better. Uh, I think that kind of happened to us, and we're not going to do that this year. All right, uh, just a couple more here from Foye Lewican, and we'll wrap things up for the day with some thoughts on Trevor Lawrence's near-term future. Um, Ryan Nielsen coming in, 4-3, 3-4. Did you hear they're going to be multiple, Tony? Have you heard that? That's a new phrase. I multiple, think maybe aggressive. Around. Aggressive and, and multiple. Yeah. Uh, anyway, does Foye envisioning his job changing at all with Ryan Nielsen coming in? As a linebacker, you pretty much have the same job description. Uh, you know, be the captain of the defense, lead them, call out what you see. Um, now the, the techniques and stuff might change in terms of how you play a play, but – kind of all, always the same, like being a linebacker. So I, I have the utmost confidence in myself to be able to adapt to whatever the scheme change is going to be. But there is going to be a scheme change for sure. Still early. We don't know exactly what that scheme is going to be. They're introducing whatever it is here through the first couple of days of the offseason program. And Foyer was asked about the difference that they we may all see in Nielsen's scheme. So everybody has a, a part in the defense. I'm trusting everybody's going to do their part. Uh, we talked about, I'm sure, if you watch the film, playing in lighter boxes, uh, but dominating in lighter boxes as well. Not just being able to get through rundowns in a lighter box, be able to, you know, make your plays and stuff. So um, I think I talked about earlier, keeping our, like, matching your coverages more. Um, it's just the way, you know, his defense is set up. But I'm excited to play in it. All right, there you go. Foye Lukin. Um Excited for all the money I'm going to be making as well as yeah. that. And I would be too, yeah. Foye, if I the were The money you. question was funny. Because yeah, right. he got asked about it. He was like, that don't mean it's not that, the most that, important thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, Talked about the third contract. When you identify, family. Yeah. Right. When you identify guys that are self-motivated and are good players, yeah. then you don't worry about that kind of stuff. Right. I don't think they're worried that Josh Allen's going to go, I got mine now. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's going to be Josh Allen. That's that's why you give him that money because you think he's going to continue to be that or better. Yeah, that's that's why you feel safe paying guys like that. You never hear any whisper that, hey, maybe Josh won't keep trying, keep motivated, keep the same guy. Uh, he got here by being the guy he is, and he'll keep being that guy. All right, so today, that brings us to our question of the day presented by Chad and Sandy Real Estate. In five years, Trevor Lawrence will blank. We asked you to fill in the blank. I'm happy to go first. I'm happy to go last. Who would like <laughs> Anybody want to jump in? I'm, you want me to lead it off? Um, you got it? I could. I can go. You can go. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go. I'm, whatever I'm, I'm order trying to, to give Johnny the. John, it looks like he's he's warming uh, up in the bullpen over there. Be a come on Cam Newton's replacement. Let's go. Uh, t top three MVP uh, player the last two or three years. Okay, and, well, and I don't know if he'll win it. Uh, right. But, so, so five years from now, we'll look back and say for the last two or three years, he was an MVP contender. Yeah. In the right. Okay. Yeah. That, that's. Mm -hmm. I would love that. That would yeah. be good, Tony, for you. Uh, easily the best quarterback in franchise history uh, by the time we get to the end of this five years. And I st my expectations are still so high for Trevor Lawrence that I think he'll be well on his way to being central in the argument for the best player in franchise history. 
Okay. By the time we get to the end of this five years. Uh, Pockets, you want to jump in? Yeah, I'll, I'm more with Tony. Uh, they definitely go back to an AFC championship at least one more time, maybe a Super Bowl, but I'm, I'm more with Tony. Definitely the best quarterback we've had ever. Okay, I'm going to put – there are always going to be a few people that well, – no matter what. If he's what I said, he'll be that too. Oh, that's fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, but yeah. where does that, how yeah. would you answer right. it? And that's, that's fine. Um, there are always going to be a few detractors no matter what, right? No matter – well, it could, sure. have been, could have been better. Right? So that's fine. I'm going to say he'll be – working on his either playing under or about to sign his third contract mm-hmm. with the Jacksonville Jaguars, right? That, which which means he could sign one this year and have it start to wrap up and be under it already, or maybe they go yeah. next offseason, whatever. Last, you look at the deals that got done last year, right, with Burrow and Herbert, they got five-year extensions on top of the year they had left, right? That's what they wound up getting. But beyond that, yeah, I think he'll be have answered – the detractors' questions about whether he's worth that kind of mm-hmm. status yeah. of being – I don't know what the money's going to be then. Is it $50 million a year, $60, $75 million? I have no idea, right? But to be paid among the top six to eight quarterbacks and not be looked at like, what? Like, right, nobody will Daniel that. Jones, what? You know, like, that's how I feel he'll be. Now, he's got to do that. I can't just wish that. To arrive here, here's some of the answers we've got. And a lot of people are still very optimistic about Trev. In five years, Trevor Lawrence will have been league and Super Bowl MVP from Cristiano. Scott says he will be a Jaguar, a top 10 quarterback, and hopefully a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. Sure, right? What do you think he will be? Mm -hmm. Uh, We already told you, Terrence said he'll be playing for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. (laughs) Uh, Tommy says he'll be able to do similar pre-stap diagnosis of Joe Burrow. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a guy that that doesn't believe in Trevor Lawrence. Uh, let's see. League MVP, Super Bowl champ, starter for the Jaguars. I think that's accurate. If I'm making a bet, I think that's the yeah. safest bet I've heard so far. We'll lead the Jaguars to a Super Bowl win, regular season MVP, two-time All-Pro, lead the NFL in passing yards and passing TDs in at least two years and one conference title game at minimum from Big Will. So, big things expected. Be wearing five Super Bowl rings. All right, some people <laughs> went that route as well. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> will be considered an average at worst starting quarterback. An average at worst starting quarterback. Mm-hmm. Well, that's even that to me is a low bar. Yeah. I'm you know? And I get it. Average at worst, but I hope it's, it's better than that. Uh, and that's on the low end. Lead the Jags record books in yards and TDs. Have the most playoff wins of any Jaguar quarterback. Super Bowl MVP. Still be a Jaguar. Two-time Super Bowl champ. Very rich young man. Have at least one MVP trophy. Appear in two AFC title games. Aaron Rodgers-esque. Most accurate quarterback in the league. Critical of his young wide receivers. Annual trip to Costa Rica for a retreat. You see yeah. the most recent one we just had? Uh, I did not. Best what is it? QB in the AFC South. Okay, that's a good one, right? Because there, there's, yeah. there's yeah. competition. Stroud, Stroud has particularly, raised the bar, yeah. Right? And we don't know what Anthony Richardson turns into, and even Will Levis, for that mm-hmm. matter. Everybody's got a young one right now. So, um, you know, I think overall, still very high expectations for Trevor Lawrence from a lot of the people. And again, mm-hmm. you're only as good as the feedback you're getting, right? So that doesn't necessarily represent uh, the entirety of, of the fan base's reaction to him, but certainly uh, some positive ones out there. John, uh, what do you have cooked up for the next seven days or so as we lead into the NFL draft? Uh, we'll be talking to Bucky Brooks on the Huddle Up podcast here in a few minutes. Um, Who's Bucky won at 17? What's his, what's his play? I forget what his last one was. Um, he's gone sort of uh, either way or anybody else with a uh, corner and maybe defensive tackle in, in, in that range. I'd rather um, have an O tackle than a D tackle myself. I think I would too. Yeah. But uh, I love the idea of like a foul Tano who can come in, let's just throw him out there, let him win a guard spot, you know, if, if he does, or or for that matter, win a tackle spot. And right give away. you a feeling of having two building block offenses. We got we got our tackles. Yeah. We got our left guard. Right. We got our center for the short term. Right. right? Maybe Cooper Hodges turns into our right guard. Right. Wouldn't yeah. be wouldn't be the worst. Right. You start sort of putting blocks together. Yeah, wouldn't have problems. And then you all. move on to we need a long term center. Yeah. Right? Which which you're supposed to be able to go get in the third round. Some, so some let's year. do that. Yeah. You know? Um, and then uh, tomorrow, Trent and Doug uh, talk at the uh, a pre-draft. So yes. That'll be uh, <laughs> not interesting, but we'll go. 
Looking forward to it. No, it won't. They, won't, they, they never really say. God, and I don't say that anything against those two guys. But if, if they're interesting, then they're screwing it up. <laughs> All right, my brother. Well, uh, we appreciate you popping in. So we'll talk to you next Tuesday here. Absolutely. And, and encourage to folks to check out the uh, Daily Mailbags and uh, all the latest as John spills all the secrets. On what I do. Trent Balky plans do. to do. It's on the special password page. Yes. You, as, as long as you got so the password. So good. It's almost like not worth watching the draft because it's already right. happened. <laughs> and just remember, halftime of week one, I'm going to say, sup? Question mark. Sup? Mm-hmm. Sup? Right. And uh, and I don't even remember what you're going to be telling me at that Trevor, point. Trevor, is he better at oh, all yeah. the? Yeah. Is he did he fix all the issues? What's up? Is he yeah. is he ready for the the enshrinement in Canton, the Ohio? New phone, who dis? Who dis? <laughs> I'm sure you will. I wouldn't doubt it. All right, that'll do it for us today. Thanks, to John Osier, for Tony Smith and Dylan Denmark. I'm Mike Dempsey. Helmets and heels coming up. We'll be back again tomorrow, a week out from the 2024 NFL Draft here on Jaguars today on 1010XL and 92.5 FM.